Over the past 15 to 20 years, Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin have been two of the best players in the NHL. However, they've never had the opportunity to play on the same team together. Well, today that's changing. Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin, I'm going to have you on the same team together, and I'm going to rebuild this team until one of you guys retires. So to begin Sidney Crosby's career, he's starting at 86 overall with high franchise potential. And if you're wondering how I made these stats right here, basically, I just copied Sidney Crosby's current stats and then reduced them a little bit in order to get him down to an 86 overall. The exact same thing is going to be happening with Alexander Ovechkin here. However, Alexander Ovechkin, he's only going to be an 85, and I do want to point this out because I already know somebody will comment it. The reason Alexander Ovechkin is 17 years old and not 18 years old is because his birthday is on September 17th, and currently at the beginning of this simulation, it's September 12th, 2023. So we have to simulate five days in order for him to turn 18 years old. But you know what? We're not going to worry about that. Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin, we're about to build a dynasty here. Now, for the first season, not too much is going to happen. We're just going to simulate to the end. I don't want to trade any draft picks away because this is going to be a bad team, and there's no doubt about it. However, if we get offered a trade that makes sense for us then we might be doing something so i'm actually pretty impressed with how the team did the brooklyn lions we're gonna be finishing with six wins this season six wins is a lot more than i was expecting it's actually six more than what i was expecting i honestly didn't expect this team to win a game all season if this team's winning games that means somebody's gotta be producing here Sidney crosby 83 points 19 goals 64 helpers while alexander ovechkin he's gonna be picking up 45 goals and 33 helpers for 78 points crosby's up to an 89 overall alexander ovechkin only an 85 though why did crosby progress but alexander ovechkin didn't at all. A bit surprised at that. The New York Rangers is going to be winning the Stanley Cup here, but I don't really care about that. I care about the draft lottery results, and we got to see what's going to be happening here. Ideally, we get the first overall pick, and by rights, we should get the first overall pick. We were the worst team in the league by far, but we're going to drop to the third overall. Surprisingly, that's actually not what's happening. We're dropping to the second overall pick. I mean, that's better than dropping from one to three. Now, it doesn't really matter who we select here. We're not going to miss. It's either going to be Berkeley Catton or Caden Lindstrom. Normally, I draft Caden Lindstrom, so you know what? Let's switch it up here. Let's bring Berkeley Catton onto the team. So the trades are going to be starting early in this video 34th overall and the 199th overall is going to be sent over to the auto centers we're picking up Ryder Ritchie in a fourth round pick now Ryder Ritchie normally develops into like an 85 86 overall player but if you give him top line minutes he might be able to reach a 90 overall and that's what I'm hoping today Ryder Ritchie Sidney Crosby Alexander Ovechkin if that's not a great first line I don't know what is and we're actually gonna make another trade at the draft here the 133rd overall and the 166th is going to be sent over to the Boston Bruins we're getting a future second round pick so during the re-sign phase of course I'm not going to bring any players back here i literally just signed the lowest overall free agents we're gonna have two players under contract heading into next season that's gonna be Sidney crosby alexander ovechkin it's time to make a million moves so let's get right into free agency and let's start making some moves and the first move we're gonna be making is brett pesci 6.1 for the next four years so you already know stick on the ice legend max domi he's gonna be joining this team 3.6 for the next five years you know who i really miss though novak he signed that extension and after signing that extension he's no longer appearing in free agency here it's sad to say that we'll never bring that stick on the ice legend back to the team but don't worry because there's still a ton of guys we can bring to the team and sean monahan's one of them 3.2 for the next four kevin lankin and we can bring you in on a two-year deal you can be our starting goaltender for this season two years at 1.8 million but he actually might be splitting starts with this guy right here scott wedgwood two years at 1.7 so of course we do need somebody to play alongside brett pesci and that's gonna be noah hannafin we're locking him down for the next six years at 6.4 million now i'm not really too sure how many more moves i'm going to be making here i'm going to sign a couple guys i guess jonathan taves you can bring you to the team but you're 36 years old why would we actually do that other other than the signings I've shown you guys right here, I don't think I'm going to be signing any more players to this team. I'm just going to let the CPU sign whoever, and then we're going to rock with the team we have for next season. Obviously, the goal for this team is not to be winning a Stanley Cup in the next three years. It's going to be like a four or five year process. But I will bring in Wenberg on a multi year deal. Can we do five years at $3 million? 29 years old, that contract could age pretty well for us. So, this is the team that we're going to be rocking with for this season. Obviously, we're not going to be good. Sean Monahan, let's just play you on the second line here. I don't really care if you don't have a good line fit. We need these 80 overalls getting some big minutes. Sidney Crosby you're up to a 90 overall and Alexander Ovechkin only at 86 I'm really surprised at that you have high franchise potential and you only went up one overall something about that just doesn't sit right with me defensively Noah Hanfin 85 overall Brett Pesci in 86 these are going to be two guys going to be holding the defense down for the near future and the goaltending Scott Wedgwood Kevin Lankinen just do what you can. I'm not expecting too much from you guys. We're going to make moves over these next couple years that are going to improve the team. I don't want to rush the process here. If we can get some elite players with those draft picks, then we should definitely do that. And while the season simulates here, this is how many subscribers I have. I'm trying to hit 62,000 by the end of the month. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Okay, so I'm very impressed with how the team's doing right now. We're not one of the worst teams in the entire league, surprisingly. I mean, yes, we are 26th in the entire league with a 29, 30, and 4 record. But considering what this team has, I was expecting us to be way worse. Yeah, we got some guys that can play on the bottom six now but even still we have so many 70 overalls on this team i don't understand how we're seeing success Sidney crosby 70 points here 21 goals 49 helpers alexander ovechkin 33 goals 32 helpers 65 points do 
Domi's got 43 points, Wenberg 41, Sean Monahan 38. I mean, I guess we do have some depth scoring, and I guess that's what's making the defense, but even still, we are not a good team. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers, Kevin Lankinen, 20 wins. Okay, Scott Wedgwood, you've been awful in between the pipes for us. A 9 and 19 record. Meanwhile, Kevin Lankinen has a 20 and 11 record. Yeah, so I think we know who should be getting the starts from here on out. So we're going to make one trade at the trade deadline here, and that's going to involve Connor Brown in a second round pick being sent over to the Calgary Flames. We're going to get Sharon Govich in a fourth round pick. I guess we're not getting that fourth rounder. I just want Sharon Govich in the deal. Maybe he's going to be the guy that plays top line minutes alongside Alexander Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby. He's a good right winger. We'll see what he can do. Eventually, we're going to bring in a better coach that has good line fits with these guys because right now, Sidney Crosby and Ovi, they definitely don't have good line fits in the slightest. So here's what the new line combinations are going to be looking like. Sidney Crosby, Alexander Ovechkin, and Sharon Govich are going to be holding it down that first line. All right, Ovi, eventually you have to start improving in overall. You're up to an 87. So I mean, that's better than what it was before. But bro, you and Sidney Crosby both have high franchise potential. I was expecting you both to be 91 overalls by now. So after acquiring Sharon Govich, if he's going to be playing top line minutes on this team, we got to make sure we pay him accordingly. 5.8 for the next eight years. Okay, the fact that we won 37 games this season still surprises me. I didn't think we'd be winning more than 20 because the New York Islanders won 20. 24 and so did the Calgary Flames. How are you guys worse than us? Like, there's no way you guys had worse players on your roster than we did. Like, imagine winning 24 games. Couldn't be me. Sidney Crosby, 88 points. Alexander Ovechkin, 82. Max Domi's finishing with 58. He's going to get a bit better over the offseason. Meanwhile, Sharon Govich, what did you do since joining the team? 16 points in 19 games. I'll definitely take it. So, another season's going to go by with us missing the playoffs, but the Vancouver Canucks are going to be beating the Florida Panthers to win a Stanley Cup. Not very often you see the Vancouver Canucks winning a Stanley Cup in this simulation, so you got to respect it when they do. But here's where things are going to get interesting. What's going to happen with the draft lottery results? Hopefully we jump to the number one overall pick. That's not going to be happening. We're going to be staying with the eighth overall. Okay, so we got to make a move here. Spence, he has top six potential. We don't know what this guy has. I don't want to take a risk selecting this player and he only has top six and not medium elite. So we're trading the eighth overall pick away. And we don't have too much time to make this deal happen. We have less than two minutes, but I want to try to acquire this defenseman from the Chicago Blackhawks. I know for a fact the eighth overall pick is going to be enough. So I'm going to throw a future second round pick in this deal. And hopefully that's going to be enough to get this deal done there we go we got this deal done now let's figure out who this prospect's going to be so we're going to simulate this draft pick right here medium top six potential that was a smart trade we just made all right so we're late in the draft here we're not really seeing any good prospects but you know what a second round from the boston bruins i'll definitely take that on and for our fifth and sixth rounder i send that over to the anaheim ducks we get a fourth rounder but also can get vac and Annan. he can be a good depth defenseman for us now as of right now the only player i can give an extension to is going to be vac and Annan, and i'm doing 1.475 for the next eight years i don't know why i can't give an extension to Crosby and Ovi right now but you know what we're not going to worry about it Crosby's up to a 93 Ovi's up to an 89 eventually both of these guys will be signed to the team so we're not going to make too many moves here but Magipani I will give you a deal here five million dollars for the next five years I think outside of you we're just going to do one year deals here so Nyquist I'll give you 4.7 for next season Riley Smith I'll give you a one year deal here's three million dollars Kuznetsov I'll also give you a one year deal we'll do 3.5 for next season I mean you can be a decent bottom six guy for us and I actually lied we will do a couple multi-year deals here I'll give Mason Appleton $3 million for the next four years. Sometimes he develops into like an 86 overall. So if that happens, that would be ideal for us. When it comes to defensemen, we have so much money we can work with. Why not do a deal like this? Brett Burns, $10.7 million for next season. And that'll trade you away at 50% retained. And then Kanijov, I'll actually do a long-term deal with you because this could actually age pretty well for us. 1.825 for the next five. All right, so I guess Brett Burns actually doesn't want to play for our team. He's returning to the San Jose Sharks on a one-year deal. So Jake McCabe will give you 5.5 for next season. Now this is what happens when you make smart free agent signings max domi 87 overall wenberg's an 86 and sean monahan's an 87 we're gonna trade these guys because look at berkeley Catton's trade value and then look at max domi's those are pretty close so we're gonna bring in some elite potential players so with the trade values increasing so much we're making a massive deal max domi wenberg and a second rounder sent over to the montreal canadians we're gonna be picking up slikovsky he's gonna play some big minutes on this team 88 overall slikovsky Sidney crosby alexander ovechkin that could be a pretty good line we're also gonna be picking up sam dickinson in this deal he's a good young defenseman 83 overall obviously this package isn't going to be enough but you know what multiple second rounders might be able to get this done i know they just said they don't really want wenberg and max domi but i feel like two second rounds would be enough to get this done they're going to be saying no maybe we just have to do a three-team trade so here's what the plan is it's going to be wenberg and a fourth round pick sent over to the new jersey devils and we're going to be picking up luke hughes now you might be thinking well you can just play luke hughes on your team i am never playing luke hughes another minute on any team i manage he's an offensive defenseman that can't score 
bro is absolutely useless in the simulation. So after acquiring Luke Hughes, it's time to flip him. It's going to be Luke Hughes, Max Domi, two second rounders and a fourth rounder over to the Montreal Canadiens. Sam Dickinson, Slikovsky, welcome to the team. So the team's definitely looking good this season. All 80 overalls in the forward core. Sidney Crosby, Alexander Ovechkin, Slikovsky are going to be holding it down the first line. Then we're going to have Sharon Govich, Sean Monaghan, and Riley Smith on the second. The reason Riley Smith's going to be playing up here is he has a perfect line fit, so why not play him there? I mean, technically, we shouldn't do Berkeley Cat, and he is a playmaker, and he would get some top six minutes. It's probably better for his development. But you know what? We're going to play him on the third line here. Defensively, this team's looking absolutely spectacular. Noah Hannafin, Brett Pesci, Sam Dickinson. The defenseman that we picked up in that Chicago Blackhawks trade, Jake McCabe and Knizhov. This is a great defense right here, and they're going to keep on getting better. And to cap it all off, Kevin Lankinen's actually up to an 84 overall, so he might be able to go on a little bit of a postseason push. I highly doubt that's going to happen, but you know what? Stranger things have happened. Now we're about halfway through the season, and it's time to give these guys some extensions. Sidney Crosby, I have no clue why you would ever accept a deal like this. $9 million for the next eight years. Alexander Ovechkin, I'm assuming you're going to ask for a bit more considering you score a lot of goals. Yeah, he's going to be looking for more here. So Alexander Ovechkin, here's the deal. We're going to be giving you 10.4 for the next eight. Okay, Alexander Ovechkin, I believe I offered you a fair deal and now you don't want to sign an extension with the team. He's probably going to ask for $15 million now. I offered you a very reasonable deal. I'm surprised you're saying no. So now that you don't want a contract extension, what are you looking for? Oh man, this is going to cost us a lot. So yep, here's the deal we're giving Alexander Ovechkin now in order to keep him on the team. $13 million for the next eight years. He better accept that now. If not, we're going to be paying that man $15 million and he is not doing us any solids. It's actually kind of funny because percentage wise, I actually gave Alexander Ovechkin more money than Sidney Crosby and he still said no. Ovi, welcome back to the team. But at that cap hit, you're not helping us at all. Now, obviously we're not going to be a top team yet, but this progression is looking great. 34, 25, and 6. We're 10th in the entire league and we're currently sitting in a playoff spot. And the reason we're sitting in this playoff spot is the top guys here, Alexander Ovechkin. He's got 86 points so far, but more importantly, 58 goals in 65 games. Sidney Crosby's got 28 goals, 47 assists for 75 points. Slikovsky, 66 points. That was a great pickup for us. Majapani, even he's having a great season. 43 points here. Yeah, we got to fill out some of the depth pieces. The second line is absolutely abysmal on this team, but that's a work in progress. Meanwhile, Kevin Lankinen is doing a great job holding it down. 29 wins, 4 shots, a 908 and a 293. Eventually, we are going to be bringing in a superstar goaltender, but for now, Kevin Lankinen, keep doing your thing. You're playing your role. One guy we could trade for right now is Sidney Crosby. BC he's still available. I kept the original Sidney Crosby and the original Alexander Ovechkin in the game, but I'm obviously not going to trade for them because that kind of defeats the purpose of this video. But shout out to current Sidney Crosby, who's 38 years old. So Kempe could potentially fit on our top six, and ideally he fits on the second line, so I think we're going to be picking him up through a trade here. I'm not too sure who we're going to be shipping out. It's probably going to be Sean Monaghan or something. Yeah, Sean Monaghan, I'm going to add you into this deal first. Ideally, we can just do Sean Monaghan straight up for Adrian Kempe, and that's actually exactly what's happening. All right, Adrian Kempe, welcome to the team. So Gustav Nyquist, you don't really fit on this team right now, and I actually don't even have you playing on the team. You're in the AHL, but I'm going to retain 50% of your money along with two first round picks because our first round pick for next season has a ridiculous amount of trade value, and it makes no sense. Kent Johnson, welcome to the team. We're going to be acquiring you. Unfortunately, they're going to be saying no here, but I think another third round pick will be enough to get this deal done. We're basically going to have zero draft picks to work with over the next couple of years, but you know what? That's perfectly fine because we're building a super team here. This deal just might be simpler to do without Gustav Nyquist, so I'm going to do a fifth rounder instead of him, and we got this deal done. Now, Gustav Nyquist, I'm just going to trade you away somewhere else and we'll get some draft picks. So as we all saw, I couldn't trade Nyquist in the last deal, but maybe I can just trade him using Trade Finder. What are we going to be able to get here? Ideally, I just want to pick up picks, but I mean, this deal right here, that's pretty good. A third rounder and a decent enough prospect. I'll take it. So after making those moves, this top six is looking absolutely incredible. Kent Johnson, 88 overall. Kempe's an 87. They have near perfect line fits. Kent Johnson actually has a perfect line fit, but Kempe, he's just one off. Meanwhile, Sharon Govich, he's going to be playing alongside these guys. Again, a plus four boost here, a plus five boost here. So the cost is going to be getting a superstar X factor in the near future. Kent Johnson's probably going to pick one up as well. Yeah, we have a solid forward core here and the defensive core is just going to keep on getting better. Now the Brooklyn Lions are officially here to compete now. We're finishing eighth in the entire league with the 44th. 30 and 8 record. The offense isn't looking that great and neither is the defense, but it's a work in progress here. Over the next couple of years, this is going to continue to improve. Now, Alexander Ovechkin, you might be worth the contract we gave you. I don't really care that you had 111 points. You had 72 goals this season. 72 goals in 82 games. You never know. This guy might eventually pick up 82 goals in one season. Sidney Crosby, 101 points here. Slikovsky's picking up 87. Kent Johnson, what'd you do since joined the team? Hopefully, you had some great numbers. Oh boy, that does not look that good. Now, I'm a bit concerned. Kevin Lankinen, you did a good enough 
rough job here 35 wins four shots a 908 and a 289 but we have bigger plans for this team that's a stanley cup and that's exactly what we're going to be winning right here we're taking on the new jersey devils in the first round this is the first time that ovi and crosby made the playoffs together let's see if they can do something magical in their first appearance now the boys are absolutely rolling right now winning the first three games of the series and hopefully we can close this out in game five yes we are a 3-2 victory we're off to the second round just like that and before we head to the second round i guess it wouldn't hurt if we give adrian kempe an extension here so here's seven million dollars for the next five years so the new york rangers must be absolute frauds here because they're gonna be losing in the first round to the detroit red wings but if detroit's being new york we actually better watch out for them they're gonna be a good team so we're absolutely dominating right now we're scoring a ton of goals and four more goals are gonna be scored in game number five here and we're off to the conference finals so we've made it to the conference finals here now we have the toronto maple leafs up next i don't know what universe this is but we're not gonna lose to the toronto maple leafs in the conference finals i'm surprised they were even able to get out of the first round so we were able to take the first two games of this series but unfortunately we're gonna be dropping two straight after that game five is gonna be a massive one who's taking the lead in this series it looks like it's gonna be the brooklyn lions are we gonna be closing this out in game six yes we are here we are season number three and we're already in the stanley cup final so we've gone ahead simulated through the first four games we won game number one we won game number four game number five is gonna be a big one who's taking the lead in this series once again it's gonna be us can we close this out in game number six and win a stanley cup we're really winning a stanley cup in year number three with Sidney crosby and alexander ovechkin two of the greatest players in the last 15 years and we're seeing success early so this is what happens when you have amazing players such as Sidney crosby and alexander ovechkin you see success early ovi's picking up 14 goals 22 points Sidney crosby leading the way 26 points here and i completely forgot who our goaltender was kevin lankinen kevin lankinen really just led us to a stanley cup here 16 wins two shots on 927 and a 239 kevin lankinen 84 overall so does it make sense to even pay a goaltender we won with kevin lankinen why would i commit nine million dollars to some guy if i can win with 1.8 now as we know we basically have no draft picks but turning a sixth and seventh rounder into a third that's probably good for this team so after winning a stanley cup kevin lankinen what are you going to be rewarded with dropping to an 82 overall and we're not giving you an extension however it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world 1.8 million we could do probably for multiple years here but you know what we're going to go to free agency and we're going to see what's available because ideally i do want an 84 overall goal tender and when it comes to the rest of the players here we're just gonna be letting them walk a lot of them are really old kuznetsov 34 jape mccabe he's 32 years old riley smith 35 garrett hathaway 34 i'm not gonna sign any of these guys to a long-term deal or even re-sign them so we have a majority of the guys coming back next season so we don't have to make a ton of moves but Anze kopitar i can do 4.1 for one season and on top of Anze kopitar we're also gonna be bringing in Pius suter on a two-year contract 1.7 million so this is gonna be a bit of a riskier deal we're gonna be bringing in schmidt on a two-way contract we're gonna do 1.9 million and then the other goaltender we're going to bring in is going to be Taras off here. We're going to do two years at $2 million. I've seen simulations where this dude becomes a beast and turns into like an 86 overall. Both of these goaltenders are pretty young, so hopefully one of them develops into something. So we're coming off a of Stanley Cup and this team continues to get better. Sidney Crosby's up to a 94 overall. Alexander Ovechkin's up to a 92. Slikovsky's a 90. He's going to have a superstar X factor before the end of the season. Sharon Govich up to an 87. You'll love to see it. Kent Johnson, Kempe at his side. No, this team's looking fantastic here. And Kopitar, he's going to be holding it down for the bottom six he's gonna be leading the way showing these guys what they need to do we're gonna be running it back again this season no question about it the entire defense is getting better here we got a ton of young guys sam dixon 84 he's gonna be leading the way his defensive partner and tristan's also gonna be a solid guy for us i eventually am gonna learn that name but i haven't learned it yet now the goaltending is definitely gonna be the biggest question mark on this team but if kevin lankinen can win with us then these two goaltenders can definitely win as well no but real talk shout out to kevin lankinen what an absolute legend who would have thought we would have won a stanley cup with him now this team should be first in the entire league right now but we decided to go one and nine in the final 10 games heading up to the trade deadline so we have a 39 24 and 3 record the offense is flying while the defense has definitely not been good I don't know what happened in these last 10 games, but this team has been awful. There has been one player that hasn't been awful though. That's Alexander Ovechkin, 91 points here, 47 goals, 44 helpers. Sidney Crosby, he's been great as well. He's got 83 points already, and Slikovsky, 75. Actually, the entire forward core here has looked fantastic, except for that second line, and the bottom six also hasn't been that great either. So I think we're going to be making some changes over these next couple of years. Well, I shouldn't say the bottom six. The third line hasn't been good. Minus 12, minus 8, minus 7. Yeah, this has to be better. When it comes to the goaltending, it looks like Schmidt's taken over. He's got 25 wins so far, a 907 and a 284. If he can continue to progress here and get up to an 84 overall, he can be the guy for us. Now we are going to make one trade here at the trade deadline. Mason Appleton, I'm going to send you over to the Philadelphia Flyers for getting Bobby Brink in a fourth round pick. We need a bit more goal scoring on the bottom six, and that's what Bobby Brink's going to bring to the team. Bobby Brink brings scoring. 
Say that eight times fast. Now the team did step it up a bit after the trade deadline. We're finishing seventh, but we were a 50 win team here. So you got to remember that scoring 3.87 goals per game. That's a great offense. Well, the defense still needs some work here. 3.23. Then again, we also have 282 overall goaltenders. So what am I really expecting? The playoffs are what really matters. And that's when our goaltenders are going to step up here. Alexander Ovechkin, he's going to lead the way 115 points, 59 goals, 56 assists. Sidney Crosby, a great season for him. 106 points. Stokowski, 92. Kent Johnson, 74. While well, the goaltending number Schmidt are you going to be the guy for us it looks like he will be 30 wins here zero shots a 913 to 267 lead us to greatness in the postseason I want to see you posting a 920 and a 220 but we better be ready for a tough matchup in the first round because we were in a pretty loaded division we're taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets first and the Columbus Blue Jackets are currently a 50 win team so two 50 win teams and then the New York Rangers in the second round as long as they don't fold if we can somehow make it to the conference finals then we'll be hoisting a Stanley Cup so the Columbus Blue Jackets just don't match up with us very well we have a 3-1 series lead here and I think we're going to be closing out pretty quick here, ideally in game six, because I don't want to go to game seven. A 5-3 victory is going to be sending us to the second round to take on the Rangers. So I told you guys who we're going to be taking on the second round here. It's going to be the New York Rangers, a 55-win team. We have two of the best matching up against each other. This is must-see hockey. Okay, we have to have a real discussion here. We have 82 overall goaltenders in between the pipes, and we've made to back-to-back -back conference finals. How does that even happen? Do goaltenders really have any value to your team? Like seriously, back-to-back -back conference finals appearances? This shouldn't be happening. Now, if we're going to make it this far, in the playoffs we might as well win the stanley cup the buffalo sabers gonna be our next matchup and after them it's gonna be either the vancouver canucks or colorado avalanche two fantastic team i know for a fact colorado still gonna have kale mccarr nathan mckinnon they're gonna be a tough team while vancouver i don't even know who's left elias Pettersson, brock besser i can't see that team being quite as good so the Buffalo Sabres have been a tough matchup so far. We've been exchanging games, and in Game 5, someone's going to be taking the lead in the series. Once again, it's going to be the Brooklyn Lions. One more win, and we're in the Stanley Cup Final. Ain't no way we've made back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals. Well, here we are. The Stanley Cup Final in year number 4. We won a Stanley Cup last season. The repeat's on the line here. The Brooklyn Lions taking on the Vancouver Canucks. I still haven't processed how we've got here. Like, seriously... Schmid's in between the pipes for us. 82 overall Schmid. That is something. And of course, no disrespect to the absolute legend in Schmid, but how is he leading us to a Stanley Cup final right now? Okay, we're down 3-1 in the series. That makes a bit more sense, but we're going to make a massive comeback here. We're winning game five, and in game six, we're going to win that one 6-1. Never mind, we're dropping that one 4-1. We made to back-to-back -back Stanley Cup finals here. Schmid carried us all the way to the Stanley Cup final. I'm going to consider this a pretty successful run, considering what the expectations were. Now, Alexander Ovechkin, another incredible postseason run. 31 points here. 14 goals 17 assists Sidney Crosby 30 points 11 goals 19 helpers looking at the scoring here I think it actually was the goaltending that let us down Schmid what were your numbers okay Schmid wasn't even in between the pipes for us it was actually Tarasov 14 wins one shot a 901 a 325 I am very confused on why he was the goaltender for us during the Stanley Cup run but he actually put up really good numbers I mean the goals against isn't that good neither is the save percentage but we did make it all the way to the Stanley Cup final so I guess we might as well just bring both of these guys back from next season and whoever's the highest overall is going to be the starting goaltender i mean ideally it is schmid because i mean i do believe he is the better goaltender here but yeah tarasov yeah a decent season now we already know we don't have a ton of picks in the draft but with the picks we do have we can't miss on any of these prospects and we're starting off with a medium lead potential two-way forward he's gonna have some good trade value so outside of that medium lead potential prospect we missed on the other three so i don't know why i was trying to gas up my drafting abilities so when it comes to the re-sign phase nothing's gonna be happening here we're gonna be letting both of these guys walk here and when it comes to goaltenders i'm not gonna re-sign this guy i don't even recall when he joined the team but I'm not re-signing him. He has AHL starter potential. Now we have a handful of guys that we have to bring back here and we don't have money for all of them. We're going to start with Sam Dickinson. I want to do a long-term deal with him and that's exactly what we're doing here. 5.5 million for the next eight. Yeah, we'll do 5.2 million. That's an absolute steal for an 85 overall and he's going to keep on getting better. And then the next big time deal we're going to be giving out is going to Rangrowski here. We're doing 6.4 for the next eight years. Now when it comes to Slikovsky and Berkeley Cat and Slikovsky is going to be sticking on this team. I don't know how we're going to free up the money for him, but we're going to find a way to keep this man long term. Berkeley Catton, on the other hand, I think we're just going to ride on his contract for this season, then trade him away. He's a great player and all, but he doesn't really have a good fit on any lines on this team except for the first line, but he can't play on the first line. We have Sidney Crosby, we have Alexander Ovechkin, so it really doesn't make sense for him to be playing on our bottom six. He will for this season, but after that, we'll probably be trading him away. So during free agency, we're only making one signing. We're giving Robbie Fabry 5.6 million. He's going to be a bottom six player for us. Outside of that move, we're not doing anything. So we already know this team's going to be incredibly successful. The top nine 
line is absolutely spectacular here. The fourth line could use a bit of work. And what am I talking about? The third line could use a bit of work as well. We don't have great line fits here, but we do have great players, and that's going to make the difference. Defensively, we're still looking absolutely fantastic here. And Groshi, I'm going to be honest, I'm expecting you to be like an 86 overall by now. You have medium lead potential, and you're playing on the top pairing alongside Sam Dickinson. Even his progression hasn't been that great so far, but you know what? I believe in the core of this team. And you know who else I believe in? Our two goaltenders right here, Tarasov and Schmidt, lead us to greatness once again. Now, this is going to be incredibly expensive, and outside the top guys on this team, we're not going to really be able to afford many players, but Slikovsky, I'll give you 10.3 for the next seven seasons. How are we going to fill out the defensive pairings next season, and what are we going to do for the bottom six? I haven't figured that out yet, but as long as we have the top guys locked down, we'll be all right. So the boys are looking pretty solid right now. We're fourth in the entire league with a 39, 17, and 8 record. The offense is flying 3.83. That might be one of the best in the entire league, while the defense below three goals a game, that's what we're always aiming for. Now, Alexander Ovechkin, you are definitely locked in this season. 53 goals in 64 games. You have 95 points. Sidney Crosby, 81 points here. Slikovsky, 72. Good thing we're keeping you around long term. Meanwhile, Kempe, why are you sucking? Like, seriously, why is the second line on this team just a massive disappointment right now? Like, Sharon Govich, Kempe, Kent Johnson, you guys are not playing up to expectations. But hey, the team's winning games. What can I complain about here? And Tarasov, keep doing your thing. Schmidt, you're having a great season as well. I don't care which guy's in between the pipes for us. We can rely on both of them. So we're going to make one move at the trade deadline. Our first round pick for this season is going to be sent over to the Vegas Golden Knights. We're looking to pick up Jonathan Marcheseau and a third round pick. That's exactly what we're getting here. That was a pretty easy deal to get done. However, that might not be the only move we make here because I am contemplating trading for a goaltender and that goaltender might be Aiden Hill. Now, don't get me wrong. We have two fantastic goaltenders right now, but Aiden Hill, I believe he could put us over the edge. 86 overall. He's got great numbers so far this season. He'll be joining a better team. I think this might be the move. So if we trade Tarasov and a second round pick over to the LA Kings, we'll bring in Aiden Hill for this season. I think this is going to be the move. I'm going to send that package over. They're saying no. I'll add a fourth rounder into the deal. I guess Philly's fourth rounder. And I think this should be more than enough to get this deal done. So Aiden Hill, welcome to the team. And it's time for you to lead us to a Stanley Cup. Now, if we're being completely honest, this top nine is winning a Stanley Cup. Kent Johnson, Kempe, Marcia So, and then Sharon Govich, Berkeley Catton, and Majapani on that third line. Yeah, we're pretty good. Now, after the trade deadline, we were the hottest team in the NHL. And that's the reason we're finishing first here. A 52, 20, and 10 record. The offense is still looking really good. And so is that defense. But that pickup of Marcia So, that was definitely the move. And Aiden Hill. We can't forget about Aiden Hill. He was putting up some fantastic numbers here. Alexander Ovechkin, another incredible year. 69 goals, 48 helpers for 117 points. Sidney Crosby, 104 points. Lukowski, 93. Marshall, so what'd you do since joining the team? I'm expecting some big numbers here. Okay, 9 points in 18 games is not what I was expecting. I was expecting a lot better than that. Well, Aiden Hill, yeah, these numbers are absolutely spectacular. You posted a 923 and a 217 since joining the team. You were definitely the difference maker for us. A 12-0-1-1 record since joining. Yeah, we're winning a Stanley Cup. We're making it to three straight Stanley Cup finals here. We're going to be winning two of the three. We're taking on the Ottawa Senators in the first round. This is the beginning of the dynasty and we're about to build an incredible one. Okay, I said we're building a dynasty here, not losing in the first round. Game five, what's happening? We're winning that one four to three. Hopefully we close this out in game six. That's exactly what's happening. I really thought we were going to lose in the first round there after I was talking about us being a dynasty. So we were able to get past the Ottawa Senators and we're moving on to the second round. We're going to be matching up against the Carolina Hurricanes. Carolina would still have a bunch of their big dogs, so they're going to be a tough team. So we've been exchanging games with the Carolina Hurricanes, so that means Game 5 is going to be the deciding one. Who's going to be taking the lead in this series? Of course, it's going to be the Brooklyn Lions. This team wins games when they have to. We're off to the Conference Finals. We've got the Montreal Canadiens. we got all the momentum, so we just got to keep on rolling here. A quick sweep over the Montreal Canadiens would be ideal. It doesn't look like it's going to be a sweep. We're exchanging games. What are the odds we win Game 5 here? Because we always show up when it matters most. Hold on, that's not happening anymore. Game 6, we got to win this one to survive. And unfortunately, we're going to be falling in the Conference Finals here to the Montreal Canadiens. Who did they even have on their team? I took Sam Dickinson away. I took Slikovsky and who to give them? Max Domi? On top of that, Montreal is going on to win the Stanley Cup, but Alexander Ovechkin, another historic playoff run for you. This man has been absolutely unreal. 28 points, 13 goals, 15 assists. Sidney Crosby, 23 points. He's been incredible as well. This entire team is looking absolutely fantastic. I mean, Berkeley Catton, you had 17 points and we're minus five. Not really ideal for this team. But Aiden Hill, what were you looking like? Did you hold the team back? 10 wins, two shots, a 905 and a 289. I think we just matched up with the good Montreal Canadiens team. I don't think we should look too deep into it. They were a good team and we lost to them. It happens from time to time. Now, the one thing this team's been lacking is a superstar goaltender, but you know what? We're just trying to save money where we can here, but you never know. Mackinac might become our guy in the future. Medium lead potential, 53 overall. We're going to give him a handful of years to develop. You never know what this guy's going to turn into. All right, so we're late in the draft here and there's not a ton of great prospects available. So we're just going to pick up two third rounders from the Buffalo Sabres. I honestly thought this deal was going to be enough. I'll give you a seventh rounder and then we'll get this done. 
So two sevenths, a fifth, and a sixth is going to be enough to get two thirds. Now we have six million dollars in cap space, but unfortunately, a handful of guys are going to have to leave the team here. Robbie Fabry's not coming back. Brett Pesci's not coming back. Marshall Soto's not coming back. Pius Suter's not coming back. This team's going to be taking a slight step back, but you know what? We're going to be all right. We'll be able to recover. However, we will make one re-signing here. Schmidt, here's a two by two. Now this right here, an amazing deal. Ryder Ritchie, one million dollars for the next eight. Like that's actually a spectacular deal. So unfortunately, we don't really have the money to bring back Berkeley Catton, but I do have a plan here. So Berkeley Catton over to the LA Kings. We're picking up Tika Ginla and three second rounders. Obviously, we're not going to be getting all these second rounders, but I would like to pick up two in a deal like this. So we're getting Tika Ginla and two second rounders. And we're not done there because one of those LA Kings picks, we're going to be flipping over to the Ottawa Senators. We're picking up Wahlberg. He's a centerman with two years left on his contract, 1.5 million. But most importantly, he can fit on the bottom six. All right, surprisingly, a sixth rounder is going to make the difference. So I'll give you a seventh as well. I honestly thought a sixth and seventh would be the difference, but here you go. We're getting this deal done and we added another player to our bottom six. And one of the other second round picks we got from the LA Kings is going to be sent over to the Calgary Flames and we're going to be picking up Hemming. He'll be another good bottom six piece, but now that those deals are complete, we got to pick up a defenseman. So I don't know how many moves we're making during the re-sign phase, but this is going to be one of them. Dylan DeMello, I'll give you 2.6 for next season. And when it comes to our next move, I think we're going to be picking up Hunter Jones, 82 overall, but at a cheap price. He only wants 800k. What if we give you like four years? Four years at 1.2 million would actually be a great deal for you. So there we go. Hunter Jones, you're locked down for the next four. All right. So I didn't think we would have to do this this early in the rebuild, but man, we actually have to trade Noah Hannafin away. This man declined really quick. Dropped to an 83 overall at 31 years old, 6.4 million. He's definitely not worth that anymore. So I'm going to send him over to the Anaheim Ducks with a third round pick. And we're going to pick up Zellweger. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like a third round is going to be enough here. I'll give you two third round picks. I'll give you a third round pick for the year 2030. And we're going to get this deal done. They're really saying no to this. This is more than enough. Then again, who really wants to take on that Noah Hannafin contract? So I'll give you a fifth rounder as well. All of this should be enough to get Zellweger. There we go. We got the deal done and we cleared up that money. Now that we've picked up Zellweger, we're going to give him an extension 4.6 million for the next five years. That's almost $2 million less than what Noah Hannafin was getting paid. So with our offseason moves completed, this is what the team's looking like. Obviously, the top six is going to be leading the way here. Plus five boost on the first line, plus five on the second. The bottom six, though, I think might be in a better spot. Ryder Ritchie, Tiga Ginla, Magic Pond are going to be holding it down that third line. And then the fourth line, we got some studs here, getting a plus two overall boost. We're going to be all right. Defensively, we got some great pairings here. We're getting some good boosts here. A plus three boost on the first line, plus three on the second, and then a plus one on the third pairing. Meanwhile, with the goaltending situation, Hunter Jones, I think you might be the number one guy for us this season. You were Schmidt. I actually really don't care who's the starter. As long as you guys hold it down and put up some decent numbers, we'll be making another deep push. So I've accepted the fact that every single season, we're going to be a great team here. We're currently sitting third, but Alexander Ovechkin, you almost have 100 points here at the trade deadline. How many goals do you have? That's what I'm really curious about. He might score 82. 64 goals in 63 games here. Holy crap, this actually might happen. We might have somebody score 82 goals in 82 games. Crosby, 94 points. Lakovsky, 80. Don't really care how the second line is doing. This team's doing fine. But Ovi, you might do the impossible here. Schmidt, it looks like you're the number one for us this season. 23 wins, zero shots, and 912 and a 271. If you can put up some good numbers during the postseason, then we'll definitely be able to win. Now, when it comes to making trades, I'm not really too sure what we're going to do here. The bottom six is going to continue to get better for this team, so I don't think we should make any risky moves here i think we might just rock with what we have now we're going to make one trade here at the deadline and that's going to be a first rounder over to the columbus blue jackets and we're going to pick up boquist for this season with the acquisition of boquist this is what we're going to be running for lines we're going to move sam dickinson down to the second pairing where we're going to get a plus two boost here and then boquist he's going to be manning that first pairing getting a plus three now the brooklyn lions are going to be a top three team this season a 49 27 and 6 record 3.91 goals per game the defense not that great 3.26 we definitely have to improve that but where is 3.26 actually sit in the entire league okay it's definitely not top 10 here we're definitely mid you know what? I think if we actually got a good goaltender, that would be the difference. Yeah, like comparing it to all the other playoff teams here, we got to get a better defense because this isn't it. The real question is what Alexander Ovechkin do to finish out the season? 78 goals in 82 games. He was just short. Sidney Crosby, 114 points. The Kofsky, 91. No, like real talk, this second line is actually just a disappointment. Kent Johnson, 88 points. Kempe, 66. Sharon Govich, 57. I think I might just have to trade these two guys right here because Kent Johnson, he's actually been doing not too bad. This season, 88 points. I mean, last season he had 65. So I think I might be gassing him up a bit too much. But yeah, outside of the first line, this team hasn't been spectacular. But this team knows how to step it up when it matters most. And that's what Schmid did. 26 wins, a 908 save percentage, and 286 goals against. I want to see you continue your dominance into the postseason. And that dominance has to start early as we have the Florida Panthers first. Now the boys are absolutely rolling right now. And the defense is looking great. We're shutting out the Florida Panthers in a quick four-game series. Now we're moving on to the second round. And we have the New York Rangers to take on next. I don't care where the 
New York Rangers are seeded, they're always a good team and we better be prepared to take them on. Now I told the Brooklyn Lions they better be prepared and after those first two games, I think we learned our lesson winning the next two. Game five is going to be a big one. Some teams going to be having the lead in this series. Who's it going to be? It looks like it's going to be the New York Rangers. The boys have to step up when it matters most and that's going to be game six here. All right, we're bringing in a goaltender for next season, like a legit goaltender, 85 overall or above because in every single game we lost, we were terrible defensively. Like there is no way that Schmidt had good numbers in the postseason. Ovechkin 15 points, Tukovsky 14 points, Crosby 11. I don't care about any of this. The goaltending numbers is what I care about. Why was Hunter Jones the starter? Okay, we actually have to have a certified number one goaltender because I thought Schmidt was the number one the entire season. I guess not. Hunter Jones, you were the guy. Has Schmidt actually ever started a playoff game for us? I feel like he always gets pushed to the side. Nah, but real talk, we got to bring in a true number one goaltender. We're doing that next season. Up until now, rocking with 82 overall goaltenders has done us fine, but this series right here just proved that we need a superstar goaltender. I shouldn't say even a superstar goaltender. We just need an above average goaltender, like an 85, 86 overall. Shout out to the Chicago Blackhawks and Connor Bedard. They're gonna be taking home the Stanley Cup this season. Salary cap's going up a little bit. I don't think we have any first round picks that we need to worry about when it comes to the draft lottery. So yeah, let's just head over to the draft, make a couple selections, then figure out what we're gonna do with this team. So far, this draft hasn't been the greatest for us, but the 126th overall pick we're going to be securing another mediumly potential goaltender we got one in the last draft and we're going to be picking up another one here now we don't have a ton of money to work with here but a guy like tiga ginla i definitely want to be bringing back so we're going to do four years at 3.7 million hemming's another guy i'd like to bring back on a short-term deal we're going to do two years at 2.4 million because ideally i'm probably going to trade him away once his rfa rights are up when it comes to these three guys here we're going to be letting all of them walk though because we only have 3.8 million left in money and boquist i'm assuming you're not going to sign for 3.8 million of course you're not gary on off you didn't really play a great role in this team however in mcdonough we could bring you back all right so i think this is what we're gonna do we're gonna trade schmidt and a third rounder over to the anaheim ducks we're picking up bloomstrand he's an rfa right now we're gonna sign him to a long-term extension now he is only a 79 overall right now but he's 22 years old he has high start potential he's probably gonna develop into like an 85 overall goaltender and ideally we can immediately sign him to an eight-year deal and get him at a really good price unfortunately it doesn't look like schmidt and a third rounder is gonna be enough so a seventh round is probably gonna be the difference in this deal so here we go with 2031 seventh round pick and we're getting this deal done now bloomstrap's actually not gonna be doing us a solid here if we did an eight-year deal he wants 5.1 million however if we do a five-year deal we can get him for like 2.5 million and i think that's what we're gonna do here so i'm really hoping you develop into a decent goaltender i'm gonna give you 2.7 for the next five years and we're kind of praying on a deal like this this is gonna be a big risk so magic contract's up after this season we're not gonna be re-signing him and he's actually not worth his contract anymore 84 overall five million dollars it's definitely not worth it so a second rounder along with magic is gonna be sent over to the chicago blackhawks we're getting Zane Park, five years left on his contract at $4.9 million. He's a good young defenseman and he's going to keep on getting better. Probably should have asked for something else in the deal, but you know what? We're going to take it. Now, we're only going to pick up one player in free agency here. It's going to be Connor McMichael, and I'm going to give him $4 million just to make sure he joins the team. Outside of that, we're just going to rock with the team we have. Now, last season, I said we were going to be bringing in a new goaltender, and he needed to be a good goaltender, like 85 overall. I might have capped about that, because I think with this forward core right here, we don't really need an all-star goaltender. We just need a goaltender that can stop the puck from time to time. We have a pretty decent defense here. The third line is consisting of two defensive defensemen. Meanwhile, when it comes to the goaltending situation, this is what we're looking at. Hunter Jones, 82 overall. Bloomstrom, an 81. He's going to be taken over probably by the trade deadline. I think he'll be up to an 83 by then. High star potential. He's going to turn into a great goaltender for us but for now this is what we're gonna rock with i'm also trying something new in this video like i really want to see how much goaltending actually matters because in previous videos i'll always try to bring in like an 87 88 overall goaltender and then sometimes we lose in the first round and get absolutely blown out meanwhile the team that goes on to win the stanley cup might have a 76 overall goaltender so how much does goaltending actually matter in this game as long as you have a decent enough goaltender i think you're gonna be okay all right who needs a goaltender when you're this good a 46 15 and 6 record we're scoring over four goals a game i don't even care that we're allowing 3.22 this team's scoring a lot of goals and we're looking fantastic and on top of this team looking fantastic Sidney crosby 100 points at the trade deadline 43 goals 57 helpers alexander ovechkin 58 goals 41 assists for 99 points slikovsky's got 90 here now nah, this team's like actually elite the second line's a massive disappointment like sharon govich is minus one well the goaltending is what i'm curious about okay hunter jones has a 30 10 and 6 record while having an 886 and a 341 i think we got to make a trade here or bloomstrand becomes the number 
one. We got to make a decision here. You know what? This team's winning games right now. We're first in the entire league. We're looking perfect. We're not screwing this up. Hunter Jones lead us to greatness with those numbers. The fact that we have a 46, 15, and 6 record at the trade deadline with those numbers makes no sense though. So the Brooklyn Lions are looking absolutely incredible. 57, 18, and 7. First in the entire league. The offense is incredible and the defense isn't actually that bad. 3.1 goals against per game. I'll take it. And Alexander Ovechkin, what an incredible season from you. 125 points, 77 goals, 48 assists, Sidney Crosby, 121 points, Stokowski, 111. No, this big three right here is absolutely insane. The second line, a massive disappointment. The fourth line was also a disappointment. Like Hemming's minus one here and he picked up 40 points. So I don't really know what some of these guys are doing, but this team's rolling right now. Hunter Jones, 40 wins, zero shots, an 896 and a 316 lead us to greatness. The fact that we're relying on Hunter Jones to win us the Stanley Cup doesn't give me the most faith in the world, but hey, we're one of the best teams in the league and this team's rolling however the playoffs are a different game and we know this the offense has to keep on scoring goals because i don't think we can rely on hunter jones unless he completely turns it around here we got to be averaging like five goals a game all right so this isn't right we won game three ten to one you would think we'd have a ton of momentum nope we're currently down three one in the series and we're about to lose in game five here unless we spark the greatest comeback of all time i don't see that happening we're out in six games a 57 win team by the way so maybe we do need a goaltender. Now, I'm not too worried, but I probably should be. Hunter Jones, clearly you're not the guy for us. Bloomstrom, I'm hoping that you jump up to like an 83, 84 overall. You got to be the guy to carry us to greatness next season. We can't be relying on Hunter Jones again. So I guess the Detroit Red Wings weren't absolute frauds because they won the Stanley Cup. How many games did this team win all season? Because they were in the wild card. Because I just thought about that. Like we were a 57, 18, and 7 win team. So that means the Detroit Red Wings were a wild card team. They had a 44, 33, and 5 record. I guess that's not all awful but it's also not that great so i mean shout out to detroit i mean you did the impossible winning as a wildcard team i mean it's not really impossible but very rarely happens now this draft's been a bit of a disappointment for us but with 194th overall we are going to be getting a low lead potential sniper here and the best part about this player right here he was a gem so there's a good chance he actually turns into an elite potential player so we're going to sign a couple guys here Wahlberg, i'm going to give you four years of 1.9 million that's a pretty solid contract for a bottom six player and Connor mcmichael we're actually bringing you back as well we're doing 2.1 for the next three so that's two important pieces to the bottom six right there and both of them are coming back. Kanijov, on the other hand, I do want to bring you back, but I'm not sure if you're worth this price. 2.5 million for the next three years. Actually, if we can get you at 2.3, then I'll bring you back to the team. That's not that bad of a deal. So here's 2.3 for Kanijov. He's going to be re signing with the team. And I guess the only guy that's not coming back is Cohen, but we are re signing him as an RFA. So Adrian Kempe, your contract's about to expire. So I want to trade you away just so we can get a bit of value out of you. So you and a first round pick's going to be sent over to the New York Islanders. We're bringing in Joe again. He's going to be a great sniper for us. 21 years old, 87 overall. And he's on a decent enough contract track 6.6 for the next four years we can work with that unfortunately they're saying no to a deal like this but we're gonna find a way to get this done probably a goalie prospect will make the difference which goaltender do i want to trade away here probably this guy right here medium elite potential but he's 22 years old i don't think he's actually gonna reach medium elite potential so i swapped out the first round pick for this season instead of next season and i included a second rounder all of this sent over to the islanders they're still saying no i'll throw in a third rounder as well but i don't really want to do more than this i don't want to do two first round picks but we might have to i think we got to do a deal like this so we have to do a deal like this and this is very expensive adrian kempe mediumly potential goaltender two first rounders and a second all of this over to the islanders and we're bringing in joe again all right so bobby brink i'm going to be honest you haven't really lived up to the potential here and the reason for that you have a terrible fit on the bottom six here i've actually been setting you up for failure so i'm going to send you a third and fourth rounder over to the st louis blues we're bringing in more and he can fit on the bottom six i kind of feel bad for bobby brink i brought this man in and i was like you know what you're going to play a great role in this team a bottom six player you're going to be critical to us winning stanley cups and and I'm pretty sure he was a healthy scratch last season. Kind of did that man dirty, not gonna lie. And then more, I actually didn't think we'd be able to do an extension like this, but I'll definitely do it 2.5 for the next eight years. Even if you turn into a third line guy at that price tag, that's not bad. Now, obviously the forward core on this team is gonna be looking absolutely incredible. Joe Aginla, he's gonna be joining the second line alongside Kent Johnson and Sharon Govich. Sharon Govich, you probably only have a couple more years left with the team and then we'll be training you away. The defense, spectacular. We've been through this every single season. We're in a good spot here. However, the goaltending. Bloomstrand, I was hoping that you'd be up to an 83 overall you're only an 82 overall can we rely on you to win a stanley cup for us probably not are we going to take that risk absolutely we already know the offense can score a lot of goals here so we're going to be a top team in the nhl we just need to be able to stop the puck and bloomstrand you were able to do that last season as the backup let's see what happens when you're the starter for this team now you might be wondering why we're at the end of the season here and i didn't stop the trade deadline to make some moves 
I accidentally simulated through it. We're fifth in the entire league with a 47, 24, and 11 record. The offense took a bit of a step back this season, but the defense was better, so we have to highlight that. With the offense taking a step back, obviously the top guys aren't going to be performing as much, but you know what? I can't complain about this right here. Alexander Ovechkin, 110 points. Sidney Crosby, 100. Slikovsky, 100. But more importantly, the second line, look at that plus minus. These guys are performing a lot better this season. I think that's going to be the difference for us. Zellweger, show it to you. 57 points. I wasn't expecting you to do too much, but you've been one of our best defensemen so far. Sam Dickinson, 44 points. You have medium lead potential. Develop an X factor. Why will you not develop an X factor? It doesn't make any sense to me. Goaltending wise, it looks like Hunter Jones and Bloomstrand shared the net together this season. He's picking up 27 wins. Bloomstrand's picking up 20. They both had three shutouts. When it comes to the numbers though, Bloomstrand's got to be the guy for us heading into the playoffs. And before we get into this matchup against the Buffalo Sabres, I'm going to make sure that Bloomstrand is the guy for us. I'm going to set him as the number one goaltender and then I'm not auto rotating goaltenders. I'm going to make sure that we run the goaltender we want. So far against the Buffalo Sabres. It's been a tough series, but Buffalo is a good team. We split the series so far. We're dropping game five. We got to respond to game six here. We can't have back-to-back -back first round exits with this team. All right, we're making changes. We're bringing in a superstar goaltender. I don't care what it takes. I know I said I want to rock with these goaltenders, but it's not working. Like looking at the stats of this team, obviously Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin are carrying the way. Crosby, eight points. Alexander Ovechkin, six. He was plus five while Crosby was plus six. What was the goaltending looking like? Absolutely awful. We ended up throwing Hunter Jones in for a couple of these games because Bloomstrand was playing so bad he got pulled in two games yeah I don't care if you're an 82 overall with high starter potential this can never happen again I'm pretty sure after we lost in the first round last year I literally said oh this can never happen again and then I proceeded to do absolutely nothing over the offseason to improve our goaltending situation but it's changing this time because we've had two first round exits I'm sick and tired of that and once again we end up losing to the eventual Stanley Cup champions in the first round so I mean at least we're losing to good teams it's not like we're losing to teams that eventually lose in the second round we're losing to Stanley Cup teams. So for the third year in a row, we're going to be securing a medium lead potential goaltender in the draft. This one, we're selecting 160th overall. Now, Hemming, you are a great player for us, but I'm not really sure if I want to commit over $3 million to a fourth line guy. Yes, I do. Here's $3.2 million. That means we have $4.7 million to bring in a goaltender, but we can just trade one of ours away. That will give us probably about $7 million to work with. We can bring in a good goaltender for $7 million. So Nokalainen, you've turned into a pretty solid player for us. AD overall, medium lead potential, and I want to lock you down somewhat long term. Term. So here's 3.6 for the next six seasons. I don't see you turning into a top six player for us because you don't really fit on those top lines. However, you're going to be a good bottom six piece. And at that price tag with you continuing to improve, you're going to develop to like an 86 overall. And for an 86 overall, 3.6 is definitely the move. Now, this is going to be the first thing we do in free agency. Kukunen, you're going to be our goaltender for the future. I'm doing $2 million for the next seven seasons. You have medium lead potential. Obviously, you're not going to live up to that potential. But at an 82 overall, $2 million for backups, not the end of the world. Now, this is going to be the goaltender we pick up here. Philip Gustafson, 85 overall. He'll be the best goaltender we've had in a very long time here. I know he's 33 years old, but we just need him for the one season. Unfortunately, Bloomstrand, a fifth rounder, is going to be enough here. So I'll throw a seventh rounder in the deal as well. And we're going to get this done. Gustafson, we're going to be locking you down for this season. We're going to have a decent enough backup. I'm going to be trading Hunter Jones away, probably getting like a sixth or seventh round pick for him because we got that guy who has medium lead potential. He's going to be our backup. This team will be a good spot for the upcoming season. Then after that, we'll make moves accordingly. So Hunter Jones, it's time to ship you out and you're off to the Buffalo Sabres. We're getting a fourth round pick for you. What are the odds we play the Buffalo Sabres in the playoffs and then Hunter Jones absolutely smokes us? Pretty high. Now this is a very risky plan, but I think it's going to work out for us long term. Sharon Govich, we have to get rid of you. You've dropped to an 83 overall and that contract, not worth it for an 83 overall. So we're going to send you over to the National Predators and we're going to try to get two second rounders. Unfortunately, they're saying no to two second rounders. What if I give you a fourth and six as well? I feel like that's going to be enough to get this deal done. All right, Sharon Govich is gone, but we already have a replacement for him. Well, we technically don't have the replacement yet. We have to trade for that replacement and they're on the Dallas Stars currently. Currently. And who is that replacement going to be? It's going to be Ernest Dillon. He's an 80 overall, 21 years old, but he can play on the second line. Ideally, we sign him immediately after we trade for him, lock him down to an eight year deal at like $4 million, and then he develops into an incredible player, and that contract's well worth it. So it's going to cost us a second rounder we got from the National Predators, a fourth rounder, and a seventh. Not only are we picking up Ernest Dillon, but we also cleared up a bunch of money in a deal like this. So if I told you the scouting completely lied to me, and Ernest Dillon actually doesn't fit on the second line whatsoever. So thanks, scout for being absolute L mans here. So that means Wahlberg, you're going to be moving up to the first line here. Not completely against that. We have you locked down for the next
next three years at 1.9 million. You're getting a plus three boost here. I think it's going to work out for the team. The bottom six is looking fantastic. Our forward core here is perfectly fine. I have no issues with that in the slightest. Now, defensively, we're actually in a better spot this season because people are finally getting X factors. We're looking pretty solid here with a plus five boost on the first pairing. Meanwhile, Gustafson, right after we trade for him, he dropped to an 84 overall, but I just need one good season out of you. Hold it down for one season, win us one Stanley Cup, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do after that. Also, Kukunen, you're an 82 overall. You still have medium lead potential. Develop into an 84 overall or something, and then maybe you can be the guy for us. I highly doubt that's going to happen, but you never know what can happen with the progression in this game. So I don't care what our record is. I don't care how good the offense is. Let's highlight that defense. 3.09 goals allowed per game. Where does that put us in the NHL? We're top seven in the NHL. This team finally has a competent goaltender that can hold it down. Our defense is looking great. It's time for us to win another Stanley Cup. And obviously, the big time players are going to be leading the way here. Sidney Crosby, 95 points. Alexander Ovechkin, 93. Kent Johnson, 76. Lakovsky, only 64 points here. Expecting a bit more out of you, but you know what? The team's rolling right now. And so is Philip Gustafson. 33 wins, two shouts, and 903 into 298. Keep on being that guy for us for the rest of the season. Step it up in the playoffs, and we'll be able to get this team another Stanley Cup. Now, looking at what's available here on the trade block, outside of Sergachev, it's basically all forwards. I mean, there is Luke Hughes, but you might as well classify him as a forward. I've had him on my team before. God forbid that man play defense and God forbid he produce any points. It's not even like I hate Luke Hughes, but in the simulation, whenever he's on my team, that dude absolutely sucks. He'll pick up like 35 points and be minus 35. I don't know what it is. He just sucks whenever he's on my team. If he's not on my team, he's absolutely incredible. The second he's on my team, bro's a bum. So Brooklyn's going to be looking elite once again this season. We're first in the entire league with a 52-19-11 record. The offense is flying and the defense, decent enough. 3.18. I would like the defense to be below three goals per game, but Phil Gustafson, I know you can step it up in the postseason. Hunter Jones, on the other hand, we know that man can't be the guy. The top guys on this team are once again going to be carrying the way. Sidney Crosby, 127 points. Alexander Ovechkin, 120. I'm actually really curious to see if any of these guys have hit a thousand points so far. Sidney Crosby, he's getting pretty close. 944 and 738 games. Games. Meanwhile, Alexander Ovechkin, how many points have you acquired so far? 976 points in 738 games. You're getting pretty close as well. Both of you guys are going to be hitting it next season, and you never know, you guys might hit 2,000 points by the end of your career. 2,000 might be a bit of a stretch, but you never know. 10 more years and 100 points per season, you're going to be pretty close. Now, Phil Gustafson, I'm not convinced in you anymore. 42 wins here, three shouts, and 899 to 309. What are you doing? Like, seriously, man, what are you doing here? You should have better numbers than this. Maybe we really have to rebuild the defense here because maybe it's not the goal tending maybe it is just the defense but we'll worry about that next season we're taking on the buffalo sabers in the first round it better not be hunter jones in between the pipes this isn't happening three straight years in a row we're not losing in the first round here what do we have to do like, what do we actually have to do here? Do we just need to rebuild the defense? That's what we're doing. We're rebuilding the defense over the offseason. Because this is honestly unacceptable. Alexander Ovechkin, 7 goals, 3 assists, 10 points. And we still couldn't get out of the first round. Lost to a wildcard team, by the way. Three years in a row we've lost in the first round. Two of those times have been to wildcard teams. At least it wasn't Hunter Jones. That's all I can say. But even Devin Levi, allowing 3.24 goals per game. We were worse than that. Phil Gustafson had a worse goals against than this. I'm scared to look at his. Like, bro, are you kidding me? An 874 and a 384. I don't even know what to do anymore with this team. We're rebuilding the defense. I know we're doing that. But when it comes to goaltenders, can we win with an 83 overall goaltender? Do we need a superstar? Or do we just need to improve the defense? Basically, every single goaltender has failed in this system over the past couple years. So I think it's the defense more than anything. Also, watch the Buffalo Sabres win the Stanley Cup again. Who would have seen that one coming? Well, unfortunately, we're not going to be bringing in a medium lead potential goaltender in this draft because we have no draft picks to work with. Yeah, so we lost in the first round. We have no draft picks. What else is going to go wrong for this team? Now, the only player we're going to bring back here is going to be Ernest Dillon. We're going to do four years at 2.2 million. Outside of him, we're bringing in a new goaltender. We're rebuilding the defense. We're making some big time moves to this team. So I think we're only going to be giving out one extension here, and that's going to be going to Kent Johnson. We're going to be locking him down. It's going to be 10.4 for the next seven years. Kent Johnson, great player for the team. We got to make sure he stays on this team. Okay. Okay, so Zane Park, you haven't really lived up to expectations with this team. You're only an 83 overall. David Ryan Walker, you could be a great defenseman for us. I don't really know where you're going to play in the lineup, but I know you'd be an upgrade. So Park in a second round is going to be sent over to the Florida Panthers, and we're picking up David Ryan Walker. So Kanijov, you keep on declining. You've dropped to a 78 overall. You're 34 years old. You're not going to get any better. So I'm sending you and a second rounder over to the Montreal Canadiens. We're picking up Weston Martins. He's an 81 overall. He's under contract for the next three years at a million dollars. It's going to be a decent enough deal for us. Unfortunately, they're going to be 
saying no right off the bat here. I do want to mention he is a defensive defenseman. That's why we're requiring him. We need some more defensive defensemen on this team. So everyone watching this video right now knows we need a goaltender. Sebastian Kosa, you're under contract for the next three years and 85 overall. We're bringing you to the team for our first round pick. I think we're done making moves for this offseason. We rebuilt the defense a little bit. We made some changes. I think we're going to be in a good spot. So we're actually going to make one more deal here. It's going to be Vakanan and Ryder Ritchie. You never lived up to your potential, but we never really gave you a shot on that second line or that top line. So that's on me. A fourth rounder and a sixth rounder. All this is off to the Chicago Blackhawks. We're picking up Klein and now we're about to sign him to a long-term deal. Maybe not a long-term deal, but at least three years. So Klein, this is the deal we're going to do. It's going to be $2.5 million for the next four. Now, I don't care how good this team looks here because they look pretty solid. Plus five boost on the first line, plus three on the second, plus one boost on the third and fourth line. The defense, it's looking better than last season. Zellweger's up to an 88 overall. I would have never expected that, but that man's turned into an absolute beast for us. Ryan Bockers joined the team 85 overall. The third pairing looks pretty solid. Goaltending 85 overall, 83 overall. This team is good on paper. We're going to do good during the regular season. We're going to be a top three team. Might even finish first in the entire league with 55 wins. But when it comes to the playoffs, no more folding. This team can't fold in the playoffs anymore. We can't lose in the first round. It's actually beyond ridiculous. This entire team is locked down for next season. Every single player that's on this team right now is going to be coming back next season. So we basically have two more years to win a Stanley Cup with this core. Actually, I'm going to say we only have one more year to win a Stanley Cup with this core. Because Zellweger, I'm going to be trading you next season because you're probably going to want $12 million. We can't afford to pay every single defenseman $12 million. We have this season to win with this core, and then things are going to be changing. Now, I'll show you guys the record at the end of the season, but I want to show you this first. Alexander Ovechkin, 118 points. Sidney Crosby, 110 points. At the trade deadline, Crosby and Ovi have over 110 points each at the trade deadline. So yeah, we better win a Stanley Cup. So here we are at the end of the season, a 62-15-5 record. The offense is absolutely flying, 4.54 goals per game, while the defense below three. I don't care what this team does in the regular season. Alexander Ovechkin, you had 144 points here, 73 goals, 71 assists. Sidney Crosby, 65 goals, 72 assists, 133 points. Bukowski, 107. The second line's looking great. The entire team's looking fantastic here. Sebastian Kosa, 55 wins, five shots, a 902 and a 285 win we are about to play the new jersey devils in the first round if we lose this the video might be over i mean the video won't be over i'm way too invested into this but we can't be just folding in the first round every single year now the face cam's coming on early for the first round we're winning game one we're dropping game two winning game three okay we split the series you gotta be kidding me we're gonna lose game five here surprise surprise and we're gonna lose in six games we were a 62 win team we're off to game seven but honestly a 62 win team Sidney crosby alexander ovechkin they both had over 130 points this is beyond ridiculous that a team like this is struggling to get past the wildcard team the new jersey devils here we go the first period we're picking up two goals here we got doubled down we're making it to the second round for the first time in four years this took way too long so it's a miracle we made it out of the first round the entire team's coming back next season but we can't get ahead of ourselves here we've only won one series we got to win three more now the boys keep on rolling here we have a 3-1 series lead against the new york rangers and ideally we close this out in game five and move on to the conference finals we're gonna blow a 3-1 series lead aren't we okay maybe we aren't maybe this team's actually going to perform now we have a goaltender in sebastian cosa maybe he's been the missing piece so we've made it to the conference finals we have the detroit red wings up next they were the first seed from the atlantic division two of the best matching up and whoever wins in this matchup is going to be winning the stanley cup i don't see the la kings or chicago blackhawks being us or the red wings so we split the series so far against the red wings of course they're a great team but we are better than them maybe we aren't better than them we got to show up here in game six to force game seven seven goals is going to be more than enough here we go game seven winners off to the stanley cup final now the big time players need to make some big time plays here the brooklyn lions are they going to be showing up here Sidney Crosby is going to be picking up the first goal of the game we're going to be doubling down here never mind the detroit red wings are doubling down crosby's picking up another though we got to respond here that's exactly what we're doing ovi's coming in clutch here so is tiga ginla it's a tie game entering overtime the next goal is going to decide who's going to the stanley cup final and it looks like it's going to be the red wings of course it's the Red Wings. And for the fourth year in a row, we're losing to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. I'm getting tired of it. I really am. And what makes it even worse is this team was incredible. Sidney Crosby, 29 points here. Alexander Ovechkin, 24. Kent Johnson, 25. The offense was absolutely rolling here. Where are the goaltending numbers looking like? Sebastian Kosa, 11 wins, one shot, a 914 to 270. These should be enough for us to win a Stanley Cup. When push came to shove, the Red Wings were just a bit better. So we don't need a goaltender anymore, but you know what? We might as well still draft one in the second 
second round, we're going to be securing this goaltender 164th overall. So I want to drop down to the 154th overall pick here. So I'm going to trade a third rounder over to the Arizona Coyotes. We're going to get a fifth and a sixth rounder from them. Okay, we basically almost have to go one for one here. I really have to trade the 97th overall to go down to the 154th. Like, this is stupid. We probably could have gotten a seventh rounder or something, but man. Also, you might just be thinking, why didn't you just draft that prospect really high? I could have. I just didn't. Now, this prospect I knew was going to be a risk anyway. It was projected that you'd have low franchise potential. Turns out to be low elite, but you know what? I had to take the risk. But it's okay that we didn't hit a home run on that last prospect because we're going to be responding here and we're drafting a 56 overall goaltender with medium leap potential. Now, this team's in a very difficult spot. Teague again, though, we're not going to be able to bring you back here. I will qualify you as an RFA because I can't pay you $5 million to play on the third line. Connor McMichael, you're going to be leaving the team. Some of these RFAs might come back if they're willing to do two-way contracts. So this guy right here, I'll bring you back. Martin, welcome to the team. However, these two guys, I don't think they're going to want two-way contracts, so they're not going to be returning to the team. Now, the reason that this offseason is going to be tough on us, these are all the guys that are going to be UFAs. Sidney Crosby, Alexander Ovechkin, of course, they're going to be coming back to the team. Joe Aginla, we got to re-sign him. Zellweger, we're not going to be able to afford him. Hemming, we're not going to be able to afford him. There's going to be a lot of changes happening to this team. Luckily though, a lot of these guys have a ton of trade value, so we can trade them away and we can get some young prospects. So of course, the main two guys you have to give extensions to right off the bat are going to be Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin. Sidney Crosby, you're not doing us any favors here. You're looking for 15 million. It's not going to cost us quite 15 million, but it's still going to be a pretty penny. Sidney Crosby, actually we have to do eight years here, so it's going to be a bit more than what I'm wanting. We're going to do 13.4 for the next eight. And then with Alexander Ovechkin, I'm a bit scared of this deal. This isn't actually as bad as I thought it would be. So I'm just going to lock you down for the same price as Sidney Crosby. We're doing 13.4 for the next eight years. We're locking both of these guys down long term, but now we got to fill out the rest of the team. Now, Joe Ginla, I don't think we're going to be able to bring you back here. Because Crosby and Ovechkin, that's going to be 26 million right there. And that gives us only $13 million to work with. We have to sign you, Zellweger, Hemming, Teague Ginla, and we have to make some moves here for next season. Wahlberg, we're not going to be able to afford him. we got to make a ton of big trades right now. So I told you guys we're going to be making a couple trades here, and this is going to be the first. Joe Ginla's over to the Pittsburgh penguins we're bringing in Leighton. he's a sniper that can play on the right side that's what we need he's under contract for the next four years at six million dollars very similar to joe again deal when we first brought him onto the team all right so i have a plan and i don't really know what we're thinking here but zellweger and teague again is going to be sent over to the st louis blues we're picking up sanderson he has high elite potential 89 overall at 24 years old he could potentially play some top pairing minutes for us i'm going to send this package over i honestly thought they were going to say no that's why i didn't ask for anything else but we're getting this deal done so david reinbacher i'm very surprised to see say that you actually declined in overall you've dropped to an 84 overall and you're actually not the only player dropped in overall once you see the other one you're gonna know why i'm so disappointed so ryan bach an immediately potential goaltender and a first round pick is gonna be sent over to the calgary flames we're bringing in mciver here i think we're actually gonna have to give up two first round picks in this deal i don't really want to do this but we have to we gotta clear up the money so two first round picks can be sent over that's still not gonna be enough here here's our second rounder for the year 2035 we're giving up quite a bit in this deal but because of our cap situation we almost have to all right so sebastian Kosa, bro, I don't know what happened to you, but you dropped to an 82 overall. You're a massive disappointment. You and a third rounder sent over to the Winnipeg Jets. We're picking up Allen in, and then ideally we sent him to a five year deal at a pretty reasonable price. They're going to be saying no to this deal. Here's a fourth rounder as well. We just got to get rid of that Sebastian Kosa money. Now, I don't really care who we bring on to this team, but we need guys for the bottom six. So here's 3.3 for next season. And then all we need are guys that can fit on the bottom six. You're coming to the team now. We'll do a one-year deal with you. I'll give you 3.4 million as well. Actually, let's make that 3.5. Philip Gustafson, 86 overall. Bro wants $10 million. But when you played for us, you got worse. Nice. So when it comes to this team, there's no question that the forward core is incredible here. The defensive core might have taken a slight step back, but I still believe we're in a great spot. The only question I have about this team is the goaltending. Allen in, can you be the guy for us? 84 overall. We just paid you accordingly. We gave you 5.4 for the next five years. You need to turn into an elite potential goaltender. We have had so many goaltenders come into this system and not live up to the hype. Can you be the guy that finally lives up to the hype and leads us to Stanley Cups? So once again, stick on the ice is going to be an absolute element here and forget to stop the trade deadline i actually didn't forget to stop i literally just simulated through it we stopped the trade deadline i set us as buyers and then hit continue simming so we're second in the entire league with a 54 24 and 4 record we were awful down the stretch we should have been first in the entire league we should have won 60 games but in the last 15 games of the season we were awful the defense though was finally below three goals a game so we can celebrate that however i'm not going to be celebrating this right here what happened to our offense we used to be one of the best offensive teams in the league and something changed 
changed here. Alexander Ovechkin only 81 points. Sidney Crosby 94. What happened to the greatness these guys used to show? Allen in. I can't complain about these numbers right here. 39 wins, three shots, and 901 to 288. But still, what happened to our great team? What happened to the dominant offense of this team? But you know what? We play good defense now. The offense is sort of producing. It's still one of the best offenses in the entire game. I don't really know why I'm talking down on it, but we got to show up here. We have the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. It's time for this team to go on another deep run. We have ourselves a new goaltender, and I just hope he can step it up when it matters most. So we've exchanged games with the Carolina Hurricanes, but we're losing game five. That's an important one. We would have been in a way better position right now if we just finished first in the entire league. We're shutting the Carolina Hurricanes out in game number six here, so we're off to game seven. So here we go. Game seven, Carolina Hurricanes taking on the Brooklyn Lions. The winner's off to the second round here, and that's going to be us. I'm just going to simulate the rest of the game here. We're taking this one four to two. We scored three goals in the first period. We had this in the bag from the very beginning. So maybe it was better that we didn't finish first in the entire league because the New York Rangers is going to be losing to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I definitely wouldn't want to be in that position, but now we have to beat Toronto. They're the Toronto Maple Leafs. This team doesn't perform in the postseason. We should be conference finals bound already. So I told y'all we were conference finals bound. A quick sweep over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Imagine losing to this team in seven games in the first round. Like, couldn't be me. So we've reached the conference finals. The Boston Bruins are going to be up next for us because they're going to be upsetting the Detroit Red Wings in a seven-game series. Then in the top half of the bracket, we have the Minnesota Wild taking on the Chicago Blackhawks. We lost in the conference finals last season, but we got a chip on our shoulder. We learned our lesson, and we also have Allen in in goal for us. That's going to be the difference maker. So obviously, the conference finals is going to be a breeze for us. Boston's a great team. We split the series so far, and Game 5 is going to be a massive one. We're taking that one 3-1, to one, and then we're going to make it to the Stanley Cup with a win right here. I guess we're not making it to the Stanley Cup final yet. We got to take Boston out in game seven first. So here we go. Game seven against the Boston Bruins. And it looks like Sid the Kid's going to be leading the way for us. We have a 4-1 lead entering the third period. And Crosby's going to cap it off with a goal in the third period to complete the hat trick. And we're in the Stanley Cup final just like that. So it's been a very long time since we've been in this position. The Stanley Cup final. We won a couple Stanley Cups early on with this team. But it's been a minute since we've been here. So we got to get another one real quick. And we got to rebuild this dynasty. Last time we were talking about starting a dynasty. I think we lost in the first round three years in a row. So yeah, no more losing in the first round. We're winning Stanley Cups from here on out. So let the simulation begin here. We're going to simulate the first four games. And ideally, we just complete a sweep here. It almost was a sweep. Actually, never mind. No, it wasn't. We lost game three and we lost game four. So game five, are we going to be losing three in a row here? Of course not. Game six is going to be the one where we hoist the Stanley Cup. And we're scoring an overtime winner to end this one. The Brooklyn Lions, Stanley Cup champions once again. And Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin, congrats on your third. I think it was their third. I think they've won two so far. I know they've won one for sure, but I don't recall if they've already won two. Now, these guys might not have been elite during the regular season, but they were certainly elite now. Alexander Ovechkin, 32 points. Sidney Crosby, 31. Kent Johnson, 25. Slikovsky, 22. But Allen, and you are the guy for us. You're the reason we won the Stanley Cup. 16 wins, one shout, a 922 and a 240. He's been the missing piece all along. We got him locked down for the next four years. We're going to be winning four more Stanley Cups. We're going on a five peat here. So we're late in the draft here, and there's not a ton of great prospects available, and I'd rather just pick up a future third round pick that we can either use in a trade or draft an amazing player with whatever's the simplest now this team is definitely going to be in a tough position there's no question about it we're going to be losing a handful of guys here but Wahlberg, i definitely want to keep you on this team we're going to do a four-year deal at 4.2 million Outside of Wahlberg, though, we are going to be losing one important piece to the team. That's going to be Hemming. 88 overall, bro wants $9 million. We can't afford it. I was going to trade him away, but you know what? We had to hold on to him. But Hemming, it's a sad day. 88 overall. You helped us win that Stanley Cup, and we're definitely going to be worse without you. Like, you're an 88 overall with X-Factors. I really want to bring you back to the team. We just can't afford it. All right, so I don't think we have that much money we can work with, and we have to sign Sanderson. What's he going to be looking for? Yeah, so that's not happening. We're probably trading you away. I was really hoping we were going to be able to keep you on this team, but man, $15 million for one season. And if we do an eight-year deal, you want $21 million? Not happening, plain and simple. So the cost, on the other hand, of course, we're going to try to keep you on this team, and we're definitely going to be able to do this. So here's 9.7 for the next eight years. That's less money than what you're getting paid right now, so that's a fantastic contract. Sanderson, we're trading you, plain and simple. Soretta, Connor McMichael, a third rounder and a fifth rounder from the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's what we're going to be getting in a deal like this. So I was under the impression that I re-signed Wahlberg. I guess I didn't. So now we got to give him an extension like this, 5.3 for the next four. I was like 110% positive I re-signed him. And then with the other two signs we're going to do, it's probably just going to be the same players as last season we're bringing onto the team. It's going to be this man right here, $3 million for one year. And then Pablo Dietz will bring you onto the team as well. We'll do 2.5 for next season. That's a pretty decent contract for a lowly potential player like yourself. Now the boys were able to win a Stanley Cup last season. Although we did go through some changes here, I still think we're in a good position. Sidney Crosby, Alexander Ovechkin, Slikovsky, that's really all we need for the forward core. 
for. When it comes to the defense, Wayne Gronoski, you're the only guy we need. Superstar X Factor, 90 overall. Everyone else will just deal with. Sam Dickinson, you're dropping down to the third pairing. I've given you every single chance to succeed, and you haven't lived up to the hype. Plain and simple. Now, Allen in. Why are you only an 84 overall? Why are you the backup? Why does this game want you to be the backup? I was expecting you to be an 86 overall this season. Led this team to a Stanley Cup. You were looking absolutely incredible. And you're still an 84 overall. Ever heard of progression? You should try it. Okay, I don't know what I just did to this team, but this makes absolutely no sense right here. A 50-13-2 record. Alexander Ovechkin, you're back to your previous dominance. What's your goal scoring numbers looking like? Only 51 goals to the trade deadline. I'm expecting more. Sidney Crosby, 95 points. No, the offense is absolutely flying right now. Obviously, we're first in the entire league. And Allen in, bro, what is this? You have an 898 and a 299, and you have a 40 10 and 1 record. Our offense is just incredible. Now, knowing how dependent we are on our forward core, it probably wouldn't hurt if we picked up a defenseman here. However, I don't want an offensive defenseman. I don't want someone like Bouchard. Bo Byram, I don't know if we're going to have enough assets to trade for him. I guess we could try, though. Okay, so it's not going to take much thought here, but how are we actually going to get Bo Byram on the team? Even at 50% retained, it's almost $7 million. We have $3 million in cap space. I don't want to give up any players, so I just don't think we're going to do this deal. And you know what? We're a 50-win team right now. Why screw it up? Let's just rock with what we have. I do want another defenseman, though, but I don't think we're going to be able to get a good one at a reasonable price. I'm happy to say history was made in today's video. 65 wins is going to tie the NHL record for most wins in a season. However, we're not going to be tying the record for most points, as the Boston Bruins actually picked up 135 points during the regular season because they had more overtime losses. The offense looking absolutely spectacular here, while the defense better than I was expecting, I'm not going to lie. And then, of course, we're going to have the top guys making big-time plays here. Sidney Crosby, 129 points. Alexander Ovechkin, 125. And Slikovsky, he's going to be our third 100-point player on the team. And when it comes to the goaltending, Allen in, you're certainly the guy for us. 52 wins, 6 shots, a 907 and a 274. It's time to go back-to-back. -back. Although I have a bunch of confidence in this team, what happened when Boston broke the win record? Like, I feel like they went on some deep postseason run. You know what? They were best team in the league, dominating every single game. But I just can't really recall what happened to them. You know what? We're not going to worry about that. We have the Ottawa Senators up for First. I mean, if you think about it, we actually didn't break the win record, we tied the win record. But we're currently down 3-2 in the series, ain't no way we're losing in the first round. I hate this team so much. I don't want to look at the stats of anyone on this team. Sidney Crosby, 11 points in 6 games, you were incredible. Obviously, Alexander Ovechkin was incredible. But you know what? I don't want to see any of the numbers from anyone on this team. How do you lose in the first round after finishing with 65 wins? That has never happened before. No team has ever finished with 65 wins and lost in the first round. I am like 99.9% .9 sure that has never happened before. No team has ever broke the win record and then proceeded to lose in the first round. Yeah, I got nothing else to say. Let's get right to the draft. Now our scouts were not cooking here and they did not do a good job scouting, so I'm not guaranteed any top 6 potential players. However, we can trade for one, so our 3rd round pick, a 5th round pick, and another 5th round pick is going to be sent over to the Boston Bruins, and we're going to try to get this top 6 potential player right here. I think it's going to cost all of our picks for this season, but honestly we're not giving up anything valuable here. The 99th overall, the 141st, the 161st, the 194th, and the 227th. All of this for the guy that Boston selected in the first round. Now we've made it to the re-sign phase and not too much is going to be happening here. We're going to qualify a couple RFAs. I'm going to sign one rookie here, but outside of that, we're actually not going to be doing anything here. All of these players are going to be walking. We can't afford to bring everyone back here, especially with the guys on expiring deals coming up. So we immediately have to give out extensions here, and Wayne Grinowski, you're going to want the first one, but I'm not sure if I want to do $16 million. It's 15.875 for the next seven years. That seems a bit expensive. You are 91 overall, our best defenseman, but do I want to commit that much money to you? I'm not really sure yet. And then Sam Dickinson, I can almost guarantee you're not coming back to the team. 6.6 .6 million isn't that bad, but I also just don't want to give you 6.6 .6 million plain and simple. So I'm really contemplating a deal like this. Wayne Gronowski, I'm going to send you over to the Florida Panthers. We're picking up Pustinen and two first round picks. Now the main reason for this is Pustinen, I'm assuming I can sign you for a lot less than $16 million. Even if we got Wayne Gronowski on a discount, we're probably going to be looking at like $14 million. I feel like once Pustinen's rookie contract's up, we're going to be able to get him for less than $15 million. So Wayne Gronowski, I'm going to ship you over. We're going to be picking up Pustinen and two first round picks. So you're going to be saying no to this deal, but I feel like a second rounder could be the difference or something. I know for a fact we're going to be picking up multiple first round picks in this deal that's just what's going to happen here a third rounder is not going to be enough to be the difference maybe two third rounders will be if two third rounders isn't enough i'll just start throwing second rounders in the deal so instead of two third rounders let's try two second rounders i'm shipping that over they're still going to be saying no do i just give them our first round pick 
Because, I mean, that could be the move. We're going to be a really good team. Our first rounder is not going to have that much value. But I don't want to give up our first rounders yet. I'll add a third rounder into this deal. That should be enough. Let's just do first round picks. Let's stop messing around. So here's our first round pick for this season. And a third round pick from the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm going to add this into the deal. They're saying no. Why don't I just take out a first round pick? If I take out one first round pick, can we get this deal done? There we go. Now we have a ton of mediumly potential players. And I want to make sure I lock all of them down long term. So Soretta, you're going to be getting 7.5 for the next eight years. MacGyver, I'm really contemplating giving you a deal here. But the only issue I have with you is you have terrible line fits across the board. So what I think we're going to do here years write out your contract this season we're gonna have your rfa rights then we'll just trade you away but soretta i want to make sure you're sticking on this team so we need a couple players for the bottom six here and danielson he could play a decent role here i believe he fits on the third line yeah he does so he'll be our centerman on the third line we're gonna be trading a medium lead potential goaltender in this rfa that we qualified we're also gonna begin the third round pick in this deal they're gonna be saying no right off the bat but you know what a seventh round will make the difference the seventh rounder the most lucrative draft pick in this game Okay, a 7th rounder is not going to make the difference here. What about a 6th and 7th rounder? That should be more than enough to get this deal done. I'm shipping that over to the Ottawa Senators and we got Danielson. So we have way too many goaltenders on this team and we need some more help on the bottom 6. So we're going to be acquiring a left winger from the Nashville Predators. So we got $16 million to work with here. So we can bring in this A4 overall defense but on a 1 year contract at $8.5 million. And you know what? While we're at it, why not bring in a guy like Miko Ranton for the bottom 6? Like he's not going to do any damage to this team. Here's 4.7 for next season. The only issue I have with Miko Ranton right now is he's 38 years old he could drop to blow an ad overall by the beginning of the season so it's the same old story with the team the forward core looks absolutely fantastic no weaknesses here whatsoever defensively we're fantastic as well i think we've taken a slight step back but you know what we're having a new core entering the lineup here so red is only 20 years old and we got him locked down long term pustin and we're going to be giving him a big extension next season these two guys right here are going to be leading the defensive core over the next handful of years while the goaltending allen in we've seen what you've been able to do during the regular season you're going to lead us to first in the entire nhl but the real question is what is this team going to look like in the postseason when it comes to the regular regular season we're always going to be a top team in the NHL there's no question about it we've proved that time and time again however time and time again we've also proved that we can't step it up when the postseason comes around we're the best team in the regular season but we're going to fold in the first round of the playoffs so are we going to be doing the same thing this season hopefully not but you know what based on history I feel like it's going to happen again you know what's the most annoying about a season like this is that I don't even care that we're 52, 11, and 3, and Alexander Ovechkin has 103 points here at the trade deadline. This team is still going to find a way to lose in the first round. It does not matter how good we are, how good our defense is, how good our offense is. This team is still going to lose in the first round. There's nothing I can do about it. We've lost 14 games all season, and we've played 66. But none of that matters. We're still going to lose in a seven game series. I don't even know what I can actually do to fix this team. So no surprise, we're first in the entire league with 61 wins, but the New York Rangers are very close to us. They finished with 58, so we got to watch out for those boys. The one good thing about this season, we didn't finish with 65 wins. We didn't tie the win record, so we're not going to be losing in the first round, or ideally, we don't lose in the first round. Alexander Ovechkin, 120 points, 71 goals. Sidney Crosby, 118. Slikovsky's picking up 112 here. The offense was absolutely flying. Of course, we already know this. Allen in, 44 wins, 4 shots shutouts and I'm not going to talk about these numbers right here. You posted horrible numbers but yet we're first in the entire league. Now we got to step it up. This is when it matters most. We've been through this time and time again win just win so the brooklyn lions actually might be legit for once a clean sweep over the panthers i'm so incredibly concerned right now the new york rangers lost in the first round to the columbus blue jackets we have to take on the columbus blue jackets next if you were able to take down the new york rangers you're legit no question about it columbus is gonna be a real tough matchup for us now i really thought we were gonna get swept after the first two games but it doesn't matter if it's a sweep or not we can't be losing in the second round to the columbus blue jackets we're forcing game seven so here we go, game seven of the second round. We're taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets. They're gonna have the lead after the first period. After the second though, we're gonna be responding, picking up back-to-back -back goals here. The third period is gonna be deciding this one and we're gonna keep on picking up goals here and we're off to the conference finals. We snuck past the Columbus Blue Jackets and we made it to the conference finals, the Detroit Red Wings. I think we had our lone scare in the postseason. I think Columbus is a better team than the Red Wings, so we should be making the Stanley Cup final here. Like I said, the Columbus Blue Jackets are just a better team in the postseason than the Detroit Red Wings are. And we're making the Stanley Cup final here we're taking them down in game five four to one now all we have to do is win four more games and we're going to be stanley cup champions we're taking on a wild card team in the calgary flames we were able to beat the columbus blue jackets i believe they were one of the best teams in the postseason but then again the calgary flames have been completing upset after upset here we gotta be prepared for a tough matchup now this was a very easy series against the calgary flames i'm not even gonna lie we won game five eight nothing like every single game we played against the calgary flames we were picking up a ton of goals six here seven Seven here six here then eight down here 
we were elite. So this guy right here, Alexander Ovechkin, this man, an absolute beast in the postseason, 22 goals, 15 assists, 37 points. He was him, plain and simple. Meanwhile, Alanen, you were not that great. You had an 898. I'm not gassing you up for that performance. Yeah, you had a 16 and five record here, but you also had an 898. Okay, us winning a Stanley Cup came at a cost. Robert Thomas retired. It's a sad day. I don't know how I'm going to continue on knowing Robert Thomas is no longer in the league. So the Carolina Hurricanes selected this prospect 9th overall. He's a 77 overall. The 18th overall range doesn't really have any great players. So the 18th overall is going to the Hurricanes. We're going to pick up this prospect and we're also getting a third rounder in the deal. They think they're getting an absolute steal. But considering you're going to be drafting a top six player yourself, you basically just gave up a third rounder for nothing. Now I have no clue why the Nashville Predators would want to ditch a guy like this. High top four potential, 74 overall, only 18 years old. But we're going to trade a couple picks over to the Nashville predators for him i have no clue why you'd want to get rid of a player like that like give him three seasons to develop and he's gonna be a great defenseman for you now this team's in a very difficult position because everyone wants money dylan he wants six million dollars he's a third line guy i'm not giving him that MacGyver, he wants a ton of money and i can't afford to give him that because we have to give out extensions next season we are in a tough position so danielson i think you're gonna be the only guy to bring back it's gonna be 2.5 for one season the goaltending situation here we're gonna qualify both of these guys and then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with them okay i actually don't know what we're doing with this team now we have two high elite potential players here and if i want to give them extensions they're looking for bags 13 million dollars for one year if we do eight years it's going to be 21 million pustin in 87 overall of course i want to keep him on the team and we might try to do that this is way too expensive though i think i'm trading you as well we're going to rebuild the entire core here all of these guys right here all of them are being traded we got some mediumly potential goaltenders we can work with a star potential one as well there's gonna be a handful of trades happening right now so pustin i brought you onto this team and i was expecting you to do big things but we can't afford you anymore so you're off to the ottawa senders we're picking up a mediumly potential defenseman he's an 87 overall ideally he can fill on the top line here i have no clue if he's gonna be able to we're gonna work with whatever happens though we're also getting a first rounder and two second rounders in this deal right here they're gonna be saying no i'll take one of the second rounders out but we're gonna find a way to get this one done i feel like a deal like this is gonna be pretty easy to get done so i'm gonna add a third rounder into the deal and a seventh rounder and that should be enough to get this one done they're gonna be saying no we just need to sweeten the touch so that means we're adding a sixth round pick as well so all of this is gonna be sent over to the ottawa senders pustin and thank you for that great season leading us to a stanley cup but things have to change and we might have been better off with pustin in, but lack so we are gonna be signing you for a bit cheaper we're doing 12.6 for the next eight years with pustin in, it was gonna be like 14 million minimum now best case scenario we can just do one for one here mciver's going over to the national predators and we're we're picking up Sanchez. Please sign a reasonable deal. Now, this isn't the worst contract in the world, but it's certainly not the best. Sanchez, we're going to be locking you down long term here. We're doing 8.5 million for the next eight years. So I don't know how this is going to work out for the team, but we got to try to do it. Leighton, I'm shipping you over to the New York Islanders and we're picking up goalie here. He's going to be a good right winger for us. That's right. We're picking up a goalie who's going to be playing on the right wing. I know that makes a lot of sense, but you just got to hear me out here. I'll throw a second rounder in this deal as well. We're getting it done. Now we got to find a way to clear up cap space in order to keep him on this team. Because between the defenseman that we signed and the contract we're going to be giving goalie here, we don't have a lot of money to work with. Okay, so I'm cooking up a deal here. Just got to hear me out. We're picking up a defenseman from the Calgary Flames. That defenseman's now going to get flipped to the Buffalo Sabres. And the reason we're making a deal like this is we just need to clear up cap space. Welch, welcome to the team. They're going to be saying no here, but I'll throw a second rounder in the deal. Actually, we're not going to mess around. Here's a first round pick for this season. All of this for Welch. That should be enough. Unfortunately, it's not going to be. I accidentally offered the same deal twice, but you know what? It just doesn't matter. Here's a second round pick from the Ottawa Senators. This is a ton of trade value being sent over. We should be able to get Welch. So we cleared up money. Now we're going to sign a handful of guys to one-year deals. And then hopefully we're going to have enough money to re-sign those three guys we gave extensions to. Okay, so we have $33 million in cap space. And I can't really pass up Quinn Hughes on a one-year deal at 16.5. It's just a one-year deal, so it's not wild. But I mean, 16.5 million is wild. We've reached that point in the video where players do not want to sign reasonable deals. But loophole, I can give you 900k for the next two years to be one of our defensemen. And then Jack Thompson and I can also bring you in on a one-year deal. We'll do 2.8 million. We still do need to fill out the bottom six a little bit. So Green Tree, I can give you a one-year extension at 6.7 million. I don't know why I said a one-year extension, a one-year signing. And then Connor McMichael, you're a legend on this team, $4 million for one season. Nice. Okay, Quinn Hughes not coming to this team is actually the greatest thing that could have happened for us because I completely... Oh, okay, we screwed this up. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We messed this up. 
I completely forgot goalie was an RFA for this season. So if we signed Quinn Hughes, goalie wasn't coming to the team. Laxo, how much money do you want and how much money do we have left here? So Laxo, you declined our deal because we actually ran out of money for you, but we can get a deal like this done. 10.7 for the next seven. Okay, this is beyond ridiculous, but you know what? We do need another defenseman here. Broberg, 5.6 million for an 81 overall. Don't judge me. Now I want to say that our team's actually better than we were last season after we won a Stanley Cup. Of course, Alexander Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, and Slikovsky, they're going to be the top guys here like usual. Slikovsky's 32, Sidney Crosby's 31, Alexander Ovechkin's 30, but his birthday's in six days, so we're just going to call him 31. I would say we got probably about six seasons left in this rebuild, give or take. These guys got to win at least five more Stanley Cups. I'm not saying high expectations, I'm setting realistic expectations. The defense, not too bad here. We got these three guys locked down long term, and they're going to be the main core for this team. But the goaltending, that's going to change over the next couple years. We have two 84 overalls, Allen in. It looks like he might be the backup this season. I really don't care who's the starter. I don't care who's the backup. As long as you can perform in the postseason, that's literally all that matters to me. Because there's only two things this team does win Stanley Cups or lose in the first round. And we won a Stanley Cup last season, so that means we're going to win another one this season and definitely not lose in the first round. Also, based on the cap situation of this team, I don't think it would even be possible for us to make a trade at the deadline, so we're just going to simulate right to the end of the season. The Brooklyn Lions continue to be incredible. 62 wins this season. The offense was almost 5 goals per game, while the defense, 2.78. We really have the best defense in the entire league and the best offense. We're scoring over 2 goals more per game. Yeah, this team's good. They're real good. Sidney Crosby is going to be leading the team this time. He's picking up 118 points. Alexander Ovechkin 112 but he's got 75 goals. Has he reached a thousand goals yet? No he's just shy. 909 goals. He's going to be passing that in the next couple seasons. 1500 points. He's looking absolutely phenomenal. We might as well look at Sidney Crosby's stats too. He's got 1540 points. Yeah these two guys have been absolutely unreal. Also Kent Johnson 108 points. Lukowski 106. We had four guys in the 100 point club. You love to see it. When it comes to the goaltending it looks like Allen and Stoller started here. 39 wins, two shots, and 901 to 277. The same percentage I'm not worried about too much. We've been playing such good defense, we're not allowing any shots. Now we have a chance at a repeat here, of course. We know how good our team is, but we also know what our team does in the playoffs. So it's really hit or miss. So the Carolina Hurricanes put up a bit of a scare here. We had a 3-1 series lead, ended up dropping game five, but we're gonna shut them down in game number six. We're winning that one six to two. Last season, the New York Rangers folded in the first round and we weren't able to take them on, but this time it looks like they're gonna be able to beat the Columbus Blue Jackets, so we're gonna beat them in the second round. Once again, the Lions are going to have a 3-1 series lead here, but this time it's not going to Game 6 as we're taking the Rangers down in Game 5, 4-1. So we've reached the Conference Finals once again. Here we have the Montreal Canadiens up next. No team has been able to put up a fight against us so far. Montreal, are you going to be the lone team to do so? Probably not. Right now, I think we're untouchable. Now, after winning the first two games of the series, unfortunately, Game 3 and Game 4 are going to be dropped by this team, but we're going to be responding in Game 5 here. A big 4-3 win, and this win right here is going to send us to the Stanley Cup Final. We're taking on the Seattle Kraken. The momentum is continuing continuing right now we can't stop we got to sweep the kraken unfortunately it's not going to be a sweep here but it will be a quick five game series and in game five seven goals is going to be more than enough and we're back to back stanley cup champions it's time for the three-peat alexander ovechkin is washed only 21 goals in 22 games who does this guy think he is He's no longer the player he used to be, only 37 points in the postseason. Sidney Crosby only 32. What happened to these great big time performers? Allen in 15 wins here, one shot, a 907 and a 257. Congrats on another Stanley Cup. You actually played not bad here. So we all understand the cap situation of this team. So we gotta bring in cheap players. And Olsen, he's a cheap rookie, 78 overall. You can play on the bottom six next season. We'll also get a fourth rounder in this deal. Maybe we won't. It's gonna be the 19th overall straight up for that prospect right there. And then the next trade we're gonna be making here is the 60. 6th overall and the 99th overall over to the Edmonton Oilers. We're picking up a defensive prospect here. This guy's going to take one season to develop and then he'll jump into the team next season. We'll have him on his rookie deal. He'll be like a 79 overall. I gave up more than we had to, but you know what? Those were late round picks. They weren't going to turn into anything special. So unless you're an RFA I can qualify, you're not coming back to this team. We don't have the money for you. We have $5 million and we have to sign like seven players. So of course, we don't have tons of money we can work with when it comes to extensions, but Mayor, I can give you 1.5 for the next two years. That's a good deal for us. Allen and we're probably going to write out your contract for this season. I want to see if you can get us one last Stanley Cup. When it comes to the forward core, Wahlberg, I'm probably just going to write out your contract. I want to get one last Stanley Cup with this core right here. Welch, we'll qualify you as an RFA, then trade you away next season. Outside of that, we're not going to be doing too many moves here. Now, I've changed my mind with Wahlberg. We're shipping him over to the Winnipeg Jets, and we're going to be picking up Kerman. He's on a one-year deal, but we're going to try to lock him down long-term. And the reason for that is we're going to be trading another core piece of this team away. Now, this is a deal that hurts a little bit because this guy's been with us 
trust for a very long time. Ken Johnson, we have to face facts here. You're 34 years old. You're 90 overall though, one of the best on this team. However, you're going to start aging out pretty quick. And Sanderson, you got medium league potential, 19 years old and 83 overall. You can be a new top six guy for us. So Ken Johnson in a first round pick is going to be shipped over. Devils are getting a great deal here, but who knows? Ken Johnson, he might drop to an 87 overall by the beginning of the season. He's only got like three good years left in him. And Connor Sanderson, he's got 10 good years ahead. So we're going to start with Kerman and he's not going to do us any favors. 10.8 million for the next eight years. He's going to be a good top six guy for us, but at that price tag, it's definitely expensive. So after making the moves we did, we do have to bring in some guys for the bottom six. Rosen, I'll give you 3.3 for next season. And then we're immediately going to sign this guy right after him. We're giving him a one-year deal as well. We're probably going to do the exact same thing. 3.3 for next season. That's a good deal. We're locking two guys down for the bottom six, but we still need to bring in a defenseman. And then when it comes to picking up another defenseman, we can do this guy right here. 1.3 for the next three. And then you know what? We qualified this RFA, but I'm actually not going to trade him away. I'll just bring him back for one more season at 3.5. Kerman actually declined our last offer, so I'm going to circle back here. We're doing 10.9 for the next eight. I know for a fact we're going to be able to sign this guy for less than 11. So a guy like Sanderson actually has a really bad fit with the team here. We have multiple snipers on the second line, so we don't need that. So I'm shipping him over to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Ideally, Domi can turn to a top six guy for us. He might fit on the first line. I don't know if he's going to be. You know what? We got to make a deal like this. We got to take some risks. Yeah, so it turns out Domi actually has a worse line fit than Sanderson, so we would have been better off sticking with him. But you know what? I don't want multiple snipers on this second line we're going to be rocking with Domi he's going to be a decent enough player for us the forward core here is still really strong the defensive core is looking even better than last season meanwhile the goaltending we got 85 overall Mare leading the way he's taking over from Allen and we got him locked down for the next three years Jackson Mare it's time for you to become the superstar we've desperately been looking for all right so we're at the end of the season here and I just looked at our record I don't really care that Domi doesn't have a good fit with this team here's six million dollars for the next eight years you're the guy for us and why is he the guy well we had a 64 9 and 9 record we had less than 10 regulation losses so yeah we're pretty good here Taking a look at the offensive numbers, Alexander Ovechkin's wash, only 118 points here. Sidney Crosby only 109, and he's dropped to a 95 overall. Sidney Crosby's already started to decline, so that means we only have probably five years left. We don't have too many years left. we got to keep winning Stanley Cups here. Mayor, an incredible first season for you. 46 wins, one shot, a 907 and 264. Hopefully the success continues into the postseason here. We're looking fantastic. We're looking to complete a three-peat here, and we have the New Jersey Devils up first. Of course, a 64-win team's not going to be losing in the first round here well ideally they don't lose in the first round ideally they don't blow a 3-1 series lead we're off to the second rounds we're taking the devils down three to two in overtime so we've moved on to the second round and now we have the pittsburgh penguins to take on pittsburgh was a fantastic team i believe they finished with 54 wins so we better be prepared for a tough matchup but it doesn't matter how good your team is the brooklyn Lions are just going to be a bit better we're taking down the pittsburgh penguins in five games i just want to keep on rolling here this team just keeps winning and winning games here so why should we stop we've moved on to the conference finals we have the detroit red wings up next and we're going to be taking down the Red Wings in five games. Four games would be nice but I don't think we're going to be taking them down in four games. Never mind that's exactly what we're doing here. Let's just keep on rolling. This team's looking fantastic. Nothing's stopping us right now. So we've reached the Stanley Cup final. The LA Kings are up next. Can we sweep the LA Kings and win a Stanley? We got swept. We got swept. We got swept. We actually got swept. Ain't no way we played the LA Kings and got swept in the Stanley Cup final. That didn't just happen. That really didn't just happen. If we lost in six games, if we lost in six games, that's fine. Losing seven, a bit better. But we got swept in the Stanley Cup final to the LA Kings. No, I'm not disrespecting the LA Kings. How many wins did that team just finish with? I gotta check that out real quick. If they were a respectable team, then I'll take it. They had 48 wins. Not the best in the world, but it certainly could be worse. We got swept in the Stanley Cup final when we had a chance at a three-peat here. I can't believe that just happened. Mayor, you were an absolute disappointment. What what are these numbers right here you have improved to an 86 overall so that would be good for next season but bro when push came to shove and i needed you to step up you folded i got nothing else to say i am so disappointed with this team now normally i don't highlight players like this but we did secure 77 overall who has top four potential with the 32nd overall pick we'll give this guy one more season to develop and then he'll be jumping onto the team now when it comes to the re-sign phase obviously we're going to qualify these rfas then trade them away but outside of that we're not really gonna have to do too much here 
Alan, and thank you for everything you've done for this team, allowing us to win a couple Stanley Cups, but we're going to be walking away here. Now, Welch, we can't afford to keep you on this team, so I'm going to send you over to the Buffalo Sabres. We're picking up Lundquist. He can play some bottom six minutes, and we're picking up Barch as well. He's going to play some bottom six minutes as well. Both of these guys are being sent over. Obviously, this isn't going to be enough. I don't even know why I bothered there. But you know what? A second rounder included in this deal will be enough to make the difference. So we're sending that over. We're basically going to be rocking the exact same team here. We should be able to see the same amount of success we saw last season. However, a different result in the Stanley Cup final. After acquiring Barch, I actually want to keep him on this team long term. So here's 1.7 for the next five. Even though he's only a 79 overall, that's a decent contract for a bottom six guy. Now I have some incredibly bad news. Sidney Crosby, you're 95 overall. We already knew you declined, but I didn't realize you declined to elite potential. This man's got like four years left max. He's going to be declining really quick here. Luckily, Alexander Ovechkin still has franchise potential, but we're entering the final years with this team. We made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final last season with basically this entire core right here. We're not going to talk about what happened. Mayor, you're an 87 overall. You've got X factors this season. We got to win another Stanley Cup here. Now the boys might have taken a slight step back, but nothing to worry about. We're still first in the entire league and the team's still looking good all around. Sidney Crosby might be declining, but he's still going to be leading the team here. 113 points. Alexander Ovechkin, only 95 points though. That's a massive fall off. You've dropped to 95 overall. The end is coming for these two guys right here. Meanwhile, Mayor, where are you going to be doing this season? 52 wins, three shots, a 906 and a 276. We got to bounce back from last season's disappointment. I want to match up against the LA Kings in the Stanley Cup final and I want to sweep them. I want to get revenge for what happened. Let's get right. Okay, what are we doing here? We're exchanging games. We're head to game seven because this team can't seem to win here. We made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final last year. We were a 64 win team and here we are just a season later and we can't even get out of the first round. It's time for the big time players to make some big time plays here. We got to show out. It doesn't look like Ovi or Sidney Crosby is going to be picking up a goal in the first period, but Crosby is going to be picking up a shorthanded goal in the second. We had a 2-0 lead, but that's no longer the case here. We're tied heading into the third period and the third period is going to decide this one. We lost. We lost in the first round. Ovi scored, Crosby scored, but we didn't score enough. We really lost in the first round. First in the entire league, by the way. And I think the worst thing about this postseason, Alexander Ovechkin, less than a point a game. Sidney Crosby, less than a point a game. I'm sad to say, but the good days are behind us. Now, I'm not even sure if we can celebrate this. A mediumly potential player selected 62nd overall. We really lost in the first round. I haven't got over that. Like, we're a good team. We're a great team. I mean, first in the entire league, we're always finishing first here. But somehow, when the games matter most, this team just does not show up. Medium top nine potential, that's fantastic. So we have to be prepared for next season, and a first round pick from the Anaheim Ducks is going to be very valuable. So in the re-sign phase, we're only qualifying one RFA here. We're going to qualify Finger, and then we have to trade him away. Bro wants $8 million. I mean, he's an 86 overall, so he deserves it. But even still, we can't afford that. Now, Slikovsky is still a good player. 88 overall, but he's 35 years old. He's going to start rapidly declining here. So I'm going to include a first round pick in this deal. We're going to send him over to the New Jersey Devils. We're going to pick up Aronson here. He's going to play some top minutes for this team. He's basically going to be Slikovsky's replacement. I'm really surprised a deal like this isn't going to be enough here. So I'll give you a second rounder for the year 2041, and that should be more than enough. They're really saying no to a deal like this. How about I just give you Anaheim's first round pick instead, and we call it a deal. I'm shipping that package over and we're getting screwed. Now the next player we're going to be acquiring is going to be Maxwell Wright. He's an 84 overall, was just drafted first overall by the Boston Bruins. We have a mediumly potential player we can throw into this deal in Horton. Fingers also going to be included along with the first round pick. I feel like this is going to be enough to get this done. That was actually really simple. So we just got an 84 overall player and we have him under contract for the next three years as rookie deal. Now we don't have to do too much during free agency, but I will sign Frondell to a one-year deal at $4 million. Well, 4.75 to be exact. So as every year passes here, we're getting close Closer and closer to retirement. Sidney Crosby, although you're still 94 overall, you have dropped to top four potential. The decline is really quick for you. I mean, like Alexander Ovechkin, he still has exact franchise potential, but you, man, these last two years have not been nice to you. Top six potential, but you're still a great player here. We still have a great core. We can definitely compete for Stanley Cups. We're going to be a top three team in the entire league. More likely, we're going to be finishing first here. Jackson Mayer, 88 overall. We're going to be first place in the entire league. We all know this. The question is, can we win when it matters most? And based on the past two seasons that answer has been no now this might go down as the most successful rebuild of all time when it comes to the regular season another 60 win season this is by far the most 60 win seasons i've ever had Sidney crosby you're one of the most successful players i've ever had in a rebuild as well 122 points here where are you going to be looking like 91 overall i think you have two more seasons left in you alexander ovechkin 111 points he's still 95 overall franchise potential mayor's goaltending numbers are so confusing though like 51 wins is fantastic four shutouts not too bad the same percentage of goals against though aren't good you still got 51 wins though so i mean 
a win is a win. We'll take it. But speaking of wins, this is when you need to win the most important games. The playoffs are taking on the Washington Capitals in the first round. We're not going to discuss what happened the past two seasons. We're just going to focus on now. So I'm happy to say we're not going to be losing in the first round here unless we have some massive collapse. A massive collapse is incoming here as long as we don't lose game six. All right, we're off to the second round. I got very concerned after we dropped game five, though. Now we have the New York Rangers in the second round, but there's something more important that needs to be addressed. The LA Kings aren't in the playoffs right now. We don't have to worry about losing to them in the Stanley Cup final. So the New York Rangers are putting up a good fight against us. So we better focus on this series right here. We're heading into game five with the series split, two games apiece. Game five is going to be a bad one for us. We're dropping that one five to four. We got to respond here in game number six. Unfortunately, that's not going to be happening. This could potentially be Cindy Crosby's last postseason, and we're going out in the second round. Hopefully he doesn't retire. We got to get one more with these boys. I mean, I'm under the impression that Alexander Ovechkin's not going to retire. He has franchise potential still. He's still 95 overall. If anyone's going to be retiring, it's going to be Sidney Crosby, who is absolutely unreal in the postseason. 19 points in 12 games, including 11 goals. What was Alexander Ovechkin up to? Because he would have had a great season as well. I mean, Ovi, this is not looking good. Four goals in 12 games. How the mighty have fallen. Also, Mayor, we're not going to be bringing you back next season because I don't think we're going to be able to afford you. And honestly, I'm actually perfectly okay with that because these last couple of years you have not been that guy in the postseason like these two were absolutely horrendous and then in this postseason yeah that was a tough way to go out but since you've been on this team, you have not been a great postseason performer. The one lone good thing, though, is it doesn't look like Sidney Crosby's going to be retiring yet. He wants to run it back for another season. All right, so we're going to be getting a great draft pick here with the 95th overall. We're securing a medium lead potential defenseman. I was going to say, obviously, this guy isn't going to develop in time for us, but he's a 70 overall already. Yeah, he might be jumping into the lineup next season. So a couple third round picks might be valuable next season, so we better acquire them here. They're going to be saying no in this deal, but I'll throw another seventh rounder in the deal. So we're going to have three third rounders to work with next season. Of course, so we're going to be shipping them out in trades though. So Crooks, you're an 81 overall that has high starter potential. Ideally, you're up to an 83 overall by the beginning of the season, then you could be the starter for us. Mayor, I'm just going to let you walk here. You've disappointed us one too many times. I don't want to bring you back onto this team. When it comes to the rest of the guys in free agency here, unless I can qualify you as an RFA, you're going to be leaving the team. So I was talking about holding on to this medium lead potential defenseman here, but we could just get Kilger from the Edmonton Oilers. He's an 80 overall, 19 years old, medium lead potential, and he could jump into the lineup this season. I can't see Cindy Crosby being on this team three years from now so we might as well just pick up this defenseman right here we don't have time to allow players to develop we got to bring in players that can compete right now so we have one goalie on our team already but why not bring in another goalie this is going to be deandre goalie 84 overall he's going to play some bottom six minutes for us we're also going to get a fourth rounder in the deal maybe not i guess we won't be getting a fourth rounder we're actually having to include picks in this deal okay we're getting scammed out here but you know what goalie's going to be a great player for us a fifth round is not going to be enough but adding a seventh into this deal will be so lundquist a fifth and a seventh over to the Toronto made police and we're bringing in goalie to play center for us so i found this goaltender in free agency right now he's mediately potential at 25 years old and 83 overall i don't expect him to progress anymore but at 2.2 million it's worth the risk we will make one signing here and that's going to be johnston i'll give him 4.4 for next season he's a grinder and he plays great defense so that's what his role will be on the bottom lines so it's the same old story as usual we're going to be first in the entire league Sidney crosby's dropped to an 89 overall we don't need to really look at this team we know who's here we know we're going to be first we know we got to win stanley cups now we've reached that point in the rebuild where there's no turning back this team's not going to be getting any better Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin they're going to keep getting worse 55 wins is all we're going to be picking up this season that's only good enough for third although Sidney Crosby's having another 100 point campaign I'm sad to say he declined even more dropping to an 87 overall and Alexander Ovechkin no longer has franchise potential he's down to a 93 overall but he's still at 89 points here 41 goals 48 helpers this might be our last true shot at Stanley Cup both of these guys are going to get worse next season I don't know if we're going to be able to win a Stanley Cup if they keep on getting worse those two guys right there are the only reason that we've been able to compete for Stanley Cups and they're the only reason that we've been able to win Stanley Cups. If they decline to the point where they can't produce at a high level, this team doesn't stand a chance. But I think this team might have one last run in them. We have a 3-1 series lead against the New York Islanders, taking them out in five games. The Islanders were an incredible team this season, so the fact that we're able to beat them in five games says a lot about us. But the one thing I didn't factor into a playoff run such as this is the Carolina Hurricanes are massive frauds. We got the Columbus Blue Jackets in the second round. Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin, you can tell these guys want to go on top with another Stanley Cup. We're taking down the Columbus Blue Jackets in a five-game series, and we're off to the conference finals. In the conference finals, we have two wild card teams remaining and the third seed in Nashville Predators. By rights, we should be taking home a Stanley Cup. We're by far the best team remaining. So it didn't take long, and we found out the New York Rangers are absolute frauds. We're going to be sweeping them in the conference finals, and here we are, the Stanley Cup final, taking on the Chicago Blackhawks. One last Stanley Cup for the boys here. We got a lock-in. We split the series so far with the Chicago Blackhawks. Game 5 
going to be a massive one. We can't be losing that. We can't be losing in the Stanley Cup final here. Crosby, you got to retire. You have to retire. There's no coming back from this. I'm sorry to say. You were absolutely phenomenal. 27 points in 20 games. Alexander Ovechkin, you were probably incredible as well. 24 points in 20 games. Yeah, this team's just not going to be able to respond from this. Crosby, you're an 87 overall. Alexander Ovechkin, a 93. This is the beginning of the end. I mean, the beginning of the end started a handful of years ago, but the fact that we lost in Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final, that's an absolute shame. No, but the fact that we lost in Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final, I'm absolutely heartbroken over that. Who knows if this team's going to get another shot at a Stanley Cup. If Sidney Crosby retires, this video is over. I don't think that Alexander Ovechkin is going to be retiring, but you never know. He's 35 as well. Both of these guys are incredibly old. We're about to find out, is Crosby or Alexander Ovechkin going to be packing it up this season? It doesn't look like it. They got one more in them. Slikovsky, though, he is going to be retiring. Show it to him. He was a fantastic player for us, but this team's got one more year in them. Now, with us being in the final seasons of this rebuild, it doesn't really make sense to draft a bunch of rookies that are going to take time to develop. We need players that can jump into the lineup right now. This first round pick from the Anaheim Ducks is going to skyrocket in value. I don't think the 32nd overall is going to be enough. Of course it isn't, but I feel like if I throw a sixth rounder in this deal, that would be enough to get Anaheim's first for next season. So we're picking up that first round pick, and we're also going to begin another here. And that won't be the only deal we do here. Two third rounders, two fourth rounders, and a sixth over to the Carolina Hurricanes, and we're getting their first round pick for next season. So we're not going to be re-signing any players here. The only thing we're going to be doing is qualifying these four RFAs. Now, of course, I don't think these guys have too many years left in them, but we are going to give them extensions. Alexander Ovechkin, 10.5 for next season. He only wants a one-year deal. Well, Sidney Crosby, where are you going to be looking for? It's probably going to be a cheaper deal. How are you asking for more and longer? That doesn't make any sense, but I guess we'll lock you down $12 million per year for the next two years. How is Sidney Crosby asking for more? Okay, so a deal like this, it might seem like a lot, but we're bringing in a medium lead potential defenseman, and he's under contract for the next two years. I guess we're going to have to give up one of these valuable first-round picks I didn't really want but do I give up Anaheim's first round pick in this deal? I think that's what we're going to do. So Kako, welcome to the team. So we have to start picking up some forwards for the bottom six here. And the first one's going to be Muzzin. He was just selected by the Florida Panthers. Fifth overall, 79 overall. He's got a couple X factors. Hopefully he doesn't take too much more in a first round pick from Carolina. I'll give you a first rounder in one of the RFAs we qualified. So we're going to add this RFA into the deal. And I think that's going to be enough for us to get Muzzin. So we're going to be completing another deal with the Winnipeg Jets here. We're sending over our first round pick in order to get a left winger. He's under contract for the next two years at 1.7 million. As long as you're on a reasonable cap hit, we can bring you to this team. I guess I also should point out we have $14 million in cap space so we could do something like this seven million dollars for Pavelski for this one season and then a long time ago green tree you played for this team so we're going to bring you back once again here we're going to do 4.8 for next season Sidney Crosby we've dropped to an 86 overall you no longer have a superstar x factor Alexander Ovechkin you're down to a 93 overall top six potential for you this team definitely can still compete for a Stanley Cup though the forward core is absolutely spectacular here the defense is going to be led by this big three right here the fact that we were able to hold on to all of these defensemen right here considering they all want about 10 million dollars is actually pretty impressive of. While the goaltending situation, we got 284 overalls. I don't care who starts in the regular season. I don't care who starts in the playoffs. All that matters is when the playoffs come around, we can win 16 games. After a bit of a disappointing season last year, we're going to be bouncing back. And once again, we're finishing first in the entire league with 58 wins. And with this team at the top, obviously you already know which two guys are going to be leading the way. Sidney Crosby, 107 points. Alexander Ovechkin, 106. Crosby's dropped to an 84 overall. Alexander Ovechkin's dropped to a 90. I think we should consider this the last dance because obviously these guys aren't going to be getting any better and I think there is a very good chance that Sidney Crosby retires. When it comes to the goaltending, both of these guys we can rely on. I don't care who's in between the pipes for us when the games matter most, you just better show up. And the final postseason run starts right here, the Brooklyn Lions taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets. So I think age is catching up to Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin. Normally a team like the Columbus Blue Jackets wouldn't be able to compete with us, but now we're trailing in the series. We're down 3-2. We're going to be responding in game six and we're off to game seven. So here we go, game seven against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Columbus is picking up three goals in the first period it doesn't look like any goals are going to be scored here during the second so the brooklyn lions could complete the comeback here we just got to pick up some goals and that's exactly what we're doing here we're off to the second round now it's pretty clear the columbus blue jacks can compete with us so that tells me there's going to be no easy matchup in the postseason the carolina hurricanes are going to be up next and more than likely this is going to be an even tougher matchup so i guess i was just doing a whole lot of yapping we're sweeping the carolina hurricanes and we're in the conference finals so we've reached the conference finals and it looks like we're going to be taking on a wild card team in the pittsburgh penguins normally i wouldn't be scared of a wild card team but they beat the ottawa centers they beat the boston bruins so they're legit so after winning the first two games the pittsburgh penguins are going to be waking up here they're taking the next two we split the series two games apiece we're responding in game five and we're about to make the stanley cup here with a win in game six here we are the stanley cup final once again this is the final chance for crosby and ovi 
Now it all comes down to this one final matchup the Brooklyn Lions taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. We all know what's on the line here. We have to get these two legends one more Stanley Cup. They deserve it more than anyone. Now all we have to do is win one more game here. We have a 3-1 series lead and I think we're going to be closing this out in game five and Sidney Crosby's career is going to be ending right here. Game six we pick up the victory here. Okay we're not blowing a 3-1 series lead. We're not blowing a 3-1 series lead in Sidney Crosby's final Stanley Cup final. So I need the big time players to step up when it matters most here. Are we going to be picking up any goals in the first period? Yes we are we got a double down in the second period we've won the stanley cup a 6-2 lead entering the third period we've got this locked down the brooklyn lions are once again stanley cup champions and of course if we're going to be winning a stanley cup the top two guys got to be leading the way here that's alexander ovechkin 19 goals in 24 games he's got 32 points Sidney crosby he's picking up 30 points here while the goaltending numbers i mean they were actually pretty solid here a 915 to 258 but you know what i don't care about the goaltending i only care about two players on this team right now that's alexander ovechkin that's Sidney crosby both of these guys being 36 years old we don't know what's about to happen next Sidney Crosby you might be retiring but you might not be I mean we did just win a Stanley Cup you might believe we can run it back once again so is Sidney Crosby going to call it a career here and retire on top? Yes, he is. He's finishing with over 2,000 points, 804 goals, 1,290 assists for 2,094 points. This dude was an absolute dominant beast throughout his entire career. But you know what? I also want to look at his postseason numbers. Because him and Alexander Ovechkin were always over a point a game in the postseason. Sidney Crosby is going to be picking up 149 goals, 205 assists for 354 points. The dominance that these two guys were showing throughout their entire career careers was absolutely unheard of also i guess we should give a shout out to alex to at for picking up over 2,000 points as well and playing till he's 44 years old so yeah he was pretty good as well this video wasn't just about Sidney crosby though it was also about this man right here alexander ovechkin 1558 games played 1183 goals i guarantee he's the all-time leader in goals scored 894 assists for 2077 points his dominance was absolutely insane throughout this entire video he was scoring tons of goals and that never stopped him the postseason numbers were also incredible for Ovi. 194 goals, 159 assists for 353 points. Before we end this video though, I do want to highlight Ovi's goal scoring numbers. A 78 goal season, a 77, a 75, a 73, 72, 71. He scored 70 goals multiple times in his career and the 60 goals, yeah, he picked up a handful of those as well. But during his prime, he was the best in the entire league. There was no question about it. Now these two guys were absolute dominant beasts throughout their entire career. And if you somehow made it to the end of this video, comment Tyler Bozak. Now you might think that's just the most random thing to comment, but for 99% of this video, when I was wearing that St. Louis Blues jersey, it was a Tyler Bozak one. I bought that the year they won the Stanley Cup, so shout out to Tyler Bozak, a St. Louis legend.